What's up, guys? Don't look directly at the eclipse or you will be eaten by giant dragon cicadas. I've got my moon goggles on. How is everyone? Give me some donuts. If you can see and hear me, give me some moons, some hearts. Are we all still alive? Sound out from your location. Are we coming in loud and clear? Yes, cyberpunk goggles. I can't really see because they're like prism-y. But I'm not looking at the eclipse. I'm looking at y'all. <laughs> Making sure everyone's doing okay. CERN is CERNing. APEP rockets are launching. Uh, where is everyone calling in from? North Carolina, are we okay? Is it the apocalypse? Everyone, sound off. Let me know if you're okay. We've got some donuts. <clears throat> it's overcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, for all of the predictions about the eclipse today, you'd think that this was the end of the world. Overcast in Oregon. Okay. Let's see, we've got Rachel coming up, talking about more Nala. <laughs> hey, Hamie Janshaw. Oh, I got a name and a Simpsons uh, character is Hamie Janshaw. I like it. Hey, what's up? <clears throat> Rachel's coming later. We've got a report from BLA. You want to hear that? Let's see what's up um, in his neck of the woods. And the harp weather machines, weather modification, silver, cadmium, iodides in the atmosphere. They've got the CERN portals open. I'm checking it out right now. We're almost at half ecliptical. Are you even in totality? That's what I'm saying. Right now, we've got portals opening up. There's ocean waves coming over. Uh, we're being bombarded with uh, fluoride. I'm totally fluoridated. I'm looking at the sky right now. Back to you. Okay, Melissa's here. <clears throat> Slow boys here. Jethro's here. Is everybody doing okay? Oh, I was making you look at my... Oh, that sucks. Huh. Let me play it one more time. And the harp weather machines, weather modification, silver, cadmium, iodides in the atmosphere. They've got the CERN portals open. I'm checking it out right now. We're almost at half ecliptical. Are you even in totality? That's what I'm saying. Right now, we've got portals opening up. There's ocean waves coming over. Uh, we're being bombarded with uh, fluoride. I'm totally fluoridated. I'm looking at the sky right now. Back to you. And we have one more report. What's going on here? Question about the moon. They said, how big is the moon compared to the sun? In fact, it doesn't matter because it's a star base. Obviously, we're seeing a star base levitating out of the cadmium iodide right now. Everyone is completely blown with benzene. This is an event, folks. You know, they talk about the blood moons. Well, all I see right now is an Artemis moon because that is... No, that's not Alex Jones. That's our own uh, streaming friend, BLA. Um, my phone's blowing up. Everybody has checked in with their totality, their eclipse totality. Um, what else was predicted? The cicadas? Where are the monster cicadas? I'm waiting for those. Um, but apeps are pepping. What else was going to happen today? A giant earthquake? Uh, that hasn't happened. <clears throat> but we are ready. We've got snacks. So I want you all to grab your snacks. I've got my popcorns. I've got three different kinds of popcorns because if you are going to do an apocalypse, you might as well have snacks at the end of the world. And I chose popcorn because <clears throat> of all the foods, there is one food that I cannot control myself when it comes to, and that is popcorn. Every other uh, <laughs> food item I can eat like a normal person. But popcorn, I don't know what it is about it. I have to uh, shovel as much popcorn into my mouth as possible. Um, the biggest handful you can imagine. And uh, I will not stop until I hear the gentle voice of God saying, My daughter, where is your dignity? <laughs> Please stop eating popcorn. So I've got 
fiery hot popcorn. I've got buttery popcorn. And I've got, last but not least, the sweet popcorn. Because you need the savory, you need the spicy, and you need the sweet for the end of the world. And I've got my kombucha. I've got y'all. We're going to have um, a lot of fun. We're just going to watch some TikToks and talk about the eclipse. Yes, my popcorn. <laughs> pop apocalypse. A popcorn. A There's got to be a portmanteau in there somewhere. A popcorn ellipse. What should we try first? Let's try buttery first. Now, it's okay. These are uh, non-GMO, no vegetable oils, no seed oils, made with ghee, organic grass, and clarified butter. So don't worry about me. We are going to be watching all my saved TikToks because TikTok might not be around for very much longer. So we have to enjoy it while we can and we're going to go back in time and see what I thought was interesting enough to save in my saved TikToks folder. Um, so who else is here? Melissa's here. She's from Texas. She was in the path of totality. Uh, so let's just go over the cabin in the woods like uh, predictions they were giving this eclipse like it's like the end of that movie where they go underground and there's all the apocalypse monsters and they're all like betting on which one is gonna like be released and wreak havoc or whatever so they were throwing everything at this event and I gotta say I was scared. I am scared. I will be scared. <laughs> um, <clears throat> because they do things like, you know, the big nine did happen. Uh, a lot of times they will use things like this as a cover for some kind of FF event. Nothing has happened yet. Um, God willing, this will just be a normal eclipse. Um, <clears throat> But why did CERN decide to fire up and smash those particles on the eclipse? I mean, if you go back in time, people who are in positions of control have knowledge of what we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. They have knowledge of technologies that common people don't know and back in the day that was astrology and astronomy the movements of the planets math and science and stuff like that and they have knowledge of human psychology so you can control a population if you know when certain events are going to occur and they don't know and the perfect example of this would be apocalypto so i know alex jones like to use that apocalypto a lot oh my mommy's calling we should answer her Hi, mom. You're on the air. I'm on the air. Yeah, I'm streaming about the eclipse. Okay, well, I'm gonna get on the air. okay. love you. Are you okay? Yeah, okay. I love you too. Bye. Okay, mom's good. Everyone is reporting in. Okay, Paul's here. Paul says it's crazy because knowing. It wouldn't pass through NorCal. There's been literally zero fear in the air. Had I not heard about it via news, etc., I'd have no idea. Yeah, I could not log in to my phone on Twitter or TikTok or anything. I couldn't have any fun for the past 10 days because it's been nothing but um, fear-mongering about this eclipse. So we are now at the... Uh, point where I guess it is crossing the X and we do talk a lot about X I mean there is something to this there was so many spurgy uh, mathematical um, calculations like it's like 666 from this and it's blah 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 from this um, I that's one of my least <laughs> favorite disciplines is the mathematic and the gematria part because if you want to look like a schizoid in front of people, just tell them about gematria and start throwing out some numbers and 
um, but they do go by numbers. So also April 8th is a weird day all in itself. Isaac Weishab did a whole show about this. Patrick um, Kotel, Church of Eternal Logos, has done uh, at least two shows about the eclipse. But April 8th was the day that the Book of the Law was channeled from Iwas to Aleister Crowley's wife and he took dictation and wrote what um, was going to be the outline or the Bible um, of the new Aeon. So that is a very weird um, coincidence. There's a lot more coincidences. Coinky dinkies. Um, I didn't watch about a week ago, I just had to stop be, or just scroll away because I was just getting too scared. Um, and I mean, I have a reason to be nervous. I don't want to tell you guys exactly why, but you'll uh, you'll understand later on why I was a little uh, nervous that there might be some kind of event today. Um, but no moon beavers. So far, uh, no New Madrid fault line earthquakes. Now that one was pretty crazy because there's been all of these TikTok guys going on about how every time there's an eclipse, there's like m giant mega earthquakes to follow. Um, and they had all of these eclipse dates and their uh, um, subsequential earthquakes. So we shall see. And it's interesting that the working or the working of the book of the law started on April 8th. It didn't end till April 10th. So we've got three days of this. We're also in the period of sacrifice in occultism or paganism or Thelema. Um, the dark left-hand path. This is the season of sacrifice. So there are were a lot of portents that this was going to be something crazy. Um, if you see, hear anything, go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, as of now, I don't think that there has been any, any destruction yet. So let's start eating popcorn and watching some TikTok. Is everybody okay in the chat? What's going on? So we're starting with Oh My Ghee. Let's see how it is. And I'm gonna try and eat it like a lady. And I invite you to grab your snacks also. Oh, this is good. This is really good. So this will be kind of fun. A chill stream, a TikTok stream. And being the boomer uh, tech that I am, I'm just gonna have to hold the phone up to the camera because I don't know any better. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we're also in Lent, which is pretty much the biggest spiritual battle of the year. So that doesn't end until May 5th. So we are right in the thick of a lot of people are calling this the Lentiest Lent that they've ever had. And definitely I have been challenged on my own. Did not like it. <laughs> um, it's not over yet, but we'll get through it and we'll get to Pascha because Christ is risen. And let's see, I'm just scrolling all the way back to the end of all of my saved TikToks. And we're just going to go through and see what was interesting to me. Um, and then if Rachel pops on, we're going to talk about Nala because we did a stream on her channel called, what was it called? Carnival Conversions. Uh, about false conversions and uh, who is sincere and who is not and how to tell if you are being scammed or grifted. So I'm going all the way back to the beginning of my saved TikToks here. Now I know a lot of you hate TikTok, but for me it was the easiest social media platform to engage with because you can actually see and hear people. Um, and it's not long format like YouTube. You don't have to uh, invest a lot of time. And you can get a sense or a feel for people in 
how they really are, not like Twitter. Twitter, I don't, Twitter makes me hate everyone. Even my friends sometimes, I'm like, what are you saying? Um, <clears throat> but I, I know that it's just the, the format and the platform because I've never hated anyone in real life, but TikTok really makes me mad at people. And I know it's supposed to do that. So I'm aware that I am under this uh, spell of the social media. So what, but when I first got TikTok, I was hooked immediately. I think it's the realest of the real of all of the social medias. Um, I'm not on there because that's my happy place. <laughs> or read, yeah, you could read, but when you just need to like lay there and rot for a second or let your mind go, because when I'm reading, I'm continually trying to write notes. My mind is so active. Um, it, it, it's work. I don't have a lot of books that I read that you can just get lost in for fun. And even those, if I read a, a fiction novel, I'm thinking, oh, how can I turn this into a stream or something like that? But TikTok, you can just literally veg out for a minute or two. You don't have to go crazy with it for hours at a time. But people made me fall in love with them. I mean, they make you laugh, they make you cry, they tell the realest, funniest stories. Um, I'm a total talker. I don't even know, TikToker. I, I hate Twitter, I hate Instagram, I hate Facebook. YouTube is okay, we're here on YouTube. It's okay for now. But I haven't created an account or posted anything because I wanna be just a lurker on there still. Someone said Jay's even beautiful. Yes, he is. He's very beautiful. And yeah, they do. They rage bait you on t on Twitter. Psychic assault. That's for sure. Um. And I think that's why they're getting rid of it. I think we're so good now at spreading information and getting the word out. <clears throat> they can't have that, and so they're gonna. Do whatever they can and try and ban it. So the first save TikTok I ever saved, what is this? Cat's Claw. So. <laughs> Cat's Claw is promoted as a dietary supplement for a variety of health conditions, including viral infections, such as HSV, HPV, HIV, Alzheimer's disease, and arthritis. Black seed oil is a superfood. It helps with insomnia and is a very powerful antiviral. I have tried both of these brands. Lemon Balm is a powerful antiviral and can speed the healing of cold sores and reduces symptoms. Olive Leaf can eliminate free radicals in the body and can improve heart health. Oregano Oil is antibacterial, antiparasitic, antiviral, and can soothe inflammation. Monolaurin is a chemical derived from lauric acid, a component of both coconut fat and breast milk. Monolaurin has great antiviral, antiprotozole, and antibacterial activity, which can help fight against intestinal worms, lipid-coated viruses, and other gastrointestinal tract infections in children and adults. Listen to this. Monolaurin can stop viruses from replicating, which can bring down the viral load in HIV patients. Hey, y'all. Okay, Let's so go out and get your cat's claw. Um, what else is she? Oil of oregano? Yeah, we used that. So this was my very first saved TikTok. Um, <clears throat> we take a lot of supplements. I take turmeric a lot. I don't think I've ever tried cat's claw. I know Clint's always trying to get me to take that. And he's not here right now. Where is he? He should be here. Slow boy said people lie too much. Yeah, we're going to get to that. So, go out and buy your cat's claw. What else? What you should know about juicing. Now remember, this is just going to be random. This is just like what I deemed good enough to save on the TikToks. And while we're watching TikToks, we are watching the sky. They say, don't look directly at it. Somebody came on and said, the Indians don't look at the eclipse because it's like bad juju or something like that. So, I, <laughs> it, nothing's going on where I live. I live as far away from the path of totality as you can get. So I didn't even go outside. But please feel, feed, feel free to report in with what's going on in your area. And if there's big giant emergencies, if the cicadas have uh, 
come out of the beaver moon, then let me know. And hello? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, I'm streaming. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye. Okay, another person reporting in. They're fine, doing good. So, what else we got? What you should know about juicing. What should I know about juicing? What should you know? Did you know there's a juice for every disease? Cold and flu. Constipation. Thyroids. Gastritis. Bronchitis. Did you know there's a juice for every disease? Cold. Okay. So get your carrot, ginger, lemon, turmeric juice. I do make um, a cough syrup that's like garlic and honey, and that works really well. What else we got? What will you do tomorrow if you simply are unable to buy things? Today I'm going to show you how to make the survival food that saved America during the Great Depression. Food I'm talking about is lard. Here's how you make it. It all starts with a superior quality fat source, such as the pork belly. To render it, you want to cut it into strips. Place it into a pot with a little water at the bottom of the pot. The water will keep your fat from getting too brown during the rendering process. Place the pot over low heat and let it work. Do not rush this process. You want the fat to slowly melt off like this. Once you've rendered all of the fat, strain it through a fine sieve and store it. In the freezer or fridge, it will last almost indefinitely. But that's not why our grandparents appreciated it so much. It was its staying power in the kitchen counter at room temperature. Click on the link below to discover more interesting things from The Lost Ways, the only book that saves our grandparents' survival knowledge that one day may be needed once more. What will you do tomorrow if you simply are unable to buy things? Today I'm going to show All right, so learn how to make lard, or render lard, I should say. I guess I'm really into, like, health and survival. I never even went back to this folder to look up what I saved. So this is like going back in time. This is gonna be like two years of TikToks. What else we got? Jazz Making nuts roasting potpourri? Making homemade potpourri. That looks fun. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. What else? Everyone is quitting their nine to five job in Web 2 so that they can work 24 seven in Web 3. He's totally- Nah, okay. I. I always save hairstyles because I think I can copy this. Like, I'm like, I have hair. I can do that. But my hair is so fussy that if I even try to do something it doesn't want to do, it will just all fall out. Like, at the end of the hairstyle, it will all be in the sink. So it's not even worth it. But that one looks cute. Maybe I could try that. I bought these little spoon keychains to sell at shows. And one of my friends saw it and was like, oh, I know what that's for. And I didn't know. But they're probably gonna sell well. I don't know why I say that. Hey, man, what's going on? What uh, brings you in today? I don't think wealthy people are as financially savvy as people give them credit. Uh -huh. Okay. What else we got? Oh, I know this guy. So I call, and they, you know, they send me to this a dentist that's on this plan. So I go in there and I was like, yeah, you know, I tell him the story and I go, so apparently I have like fucking almost two dozen cavities. And he goes, okay. You only have like 30, 14 in I your know, mouth. I know. Half of them are infected. Are infected. So I go, you know, check me out. And he goes, okay. I looked. He goes, you have zero cavities. And I go, what? And he goes, you don't have any cavities. And I go, wait a minute. So like, what is that? So he basically, he explains, he goes, well, what happened is like, you know, he goes like, you see this? Like, this little thing here, he goes, one day, that might progress into a cavity. But, but it's not a cavity. He goes, so, what this guy was going to do was just drill your mouth everywhere. Yeah. Uh, like, at the prospect of cavities, and just have you pay for it. So, it, the treat, like, the free whitening was a way to just bring in 50 people, and then get them to pay for all these other things. So, I call, and they, you know, they send me to this, a dentist that's on this plan. So I go in there and I was like, yeah, you know, I tell him the story and I go, so apparently I have like fucking almost two dozen cat. Okay, so this happened to me when I was young. They put 
every molar they drilled it out and put in filling and when I got older and I realized how toxic the mercury amalgam fillings are I had to pay as an adult thousands and thousands of dollars to go get all of these replaced and I don't really think I had that much cavities as a kid I think they just try to make money off you like he's talking about cavities and he goes okay you only have like 34 does anybody else have any dental horror stories root cause is a great documentary about the connectivity the function of your body and teeth yes that's a really good point and like they did this study about women who have breast cancer and how it correlates to their root canals so Root canals is probably one of the worst things you can do to your body. Um, if you can avoid those at all cost, um, if you can just get the tooth pulled, I would recommend it if it's already, you know, past gone. But root canals, yes, are definitely toxic. They can cause um, all kinds of health problems, breast cancer, heart attacks, etc. So do not get a root canal. Okay, next. Who's this guy? I want you guys to do an experiment for me. I don't Go know. find an old clock, an old alarm clock, really any analog clock that's not connected to the world clock, like your phone or computer or anything like that. Plug it in and sync it to your phone and give it one week. We're losing minutes a week now. Minutes. Time sure feels like it's flying, huh? Okay, what is he talking about? That sounds crazy. Is time going faster? I don't know. Here's another hairstyle that I'll never try. I was a nanny in New York City and I lived with this family who had a house in the Hamptons. And they went out year round pretty often to their house. But in the summer, the mom and the kids and I would pretty much move out there. And then the dad would come out on the weekends on his private plane. Not his, but he would rent one and then we'd go pick him up, drop him off. Okay, so... He wasn't around very much. He worked a lot, okay? And they lived in the water, and there was this uh, bench down by the water, and he was home one weekend, and the whole family was down there, and this was, like, a rare occasion that, like, all four of them were together, and they were watching the sunset. <laughs> and I had a camera. It was probably a disposable camera. And I went down to take a picture. I thought, it's so lovely. This is, like, what a great picture. Plus, he didn't have a lot of pictures with the kids. So I was like, what, like, a sweet thing that I can do? Go take this picture. And I got down there. And now there's another part of me that I get it, like, to have a family moment and then your nanny pops up, which makes me think of another story, actually, um, from another family that I lived with. But um, he was so mad about it. He was, like, yelling at me. He didn't want to take a picture. This wasn't the time. And he was, like, so upset. About it. It's, like, the way you communicate right he was just like snapped on me and i went up to the house and like ended up crying but here's the thing he i sent pictures to his family especially his mom she lived far away the grandmother and i used to actually print pictures and mail them to her and years and years later the mom passed away and i happened to run into the family on the street his family was in town visiting i think it was uh, thanksgiving and um his sister said hey when mom passed and we started cleaning out all of her stuff, we found all the letters and all the pictures, and she'd put them in frames because I always wrote on the back of them. And his sister just wanted me to know that it really meant a lot to his mom and to their family and that it didn't go unnoticed. I was a nanny in New York City. Why did I even say that? That was not even a cool story. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Um, what else we got? Everyone's still talking about teeth. Yeah. You can reverse cavities with diet and remineralizing tooth putty. No money in that. Um, the best toothpaste I've seen for that is called Hydroxy Petite. That's the kind I like to use. Um, you can get that on Amazon. It's called Boca Hydroxy Petite, but that can help remineralize your teeth. <laughs> do people treat TikTok like therapy? Yes, exactly. They do. Um... This lady needs a journal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I saved that one. That was just like, that's weird. But let's try and find something good. A workout, a hairstyle, a... Oh, here's a funny guy. Okay. Well, I'm really glad we did this. Yeah, me too. Oh, thank you. I've never been on a blind date before. Yeah, me neither. Well, I just have one more thing I need to do. What's that? Oh, I just have some questions. Standard stuff. Nothing crazy. Just don't want to waste each other's time in the future, you know? Okay. So question number one. Are you a narcissist? What? A narcissist. Can you tell me one reason you're not a narcissist? Um, I don't know. Okay. Doesn't know. 
withers. What are you writing? Nothing. Next question. Are you healing from your childhood traumas? Or are you planning on projecting your unprocessed pain onto me through your inability to take any accountability for anything that you do wrong? I'm not sure I understood that. Your traumas. Are you healing or are you planning on love bombing me and then running away when I actually get close because of your deep-seated fear of abandonment? I don't know what you just said. Hmm. Okay. Doesn't know that either. You writing again? Moving on. How are you going to resolve our differences in sexual needs? Sexual needs? Yeah, couples fight about sex all the time. I mean, what are you going to do to prevent that? Well, uh, what were you going to do? Uh, talk about it beforehand, make a plan, create a safe environment where someone can share if they feel neglected, compromise, establish healthy boundaries. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Okay, I'm going to say a word. I want you to stop me when you can give me even a rough definition or example of that word, okay? I don't think I'm going to like this game. First word, empathy. <laughs> Nothing? Okay, how about vulnerability? Skip. Intimacy. Are these English words? I'm, I don't know Spanish. I'm going to pass. Can I pass? Okay, which of my <laughs> needs will eventually be a burden for you? That is so funny. Someone said, WTF, is this guy gay? Okay, as far as I know, this guy lost his relationship, um, and he had to do a lot of self-reflection and work on himself to get to a point where he could be in another relationship. He does a lot of these um, funny skits, but I just thought it was a... Uh, entertaining because this is kind of how you have to approach dating nowadays um because the 20th century and like we said with Alice Ricoli and the Aeon of Horus this is literally a narcissist production factory um <clears throat> so you really have to be aware of what dark triad uh personality types are and what they're capable of because you will be in a lot of danger if you just go through life believing the best, thinking the best of everybody, um, loving with your full heart. Like, I learned all these lessons personally. Um, you have to really be smart about who you enter into relationships with nowadays because <clears throat> just because of how the culture has produced people. So... I just thought that was a funny <clears throat> first date with a clipboard like can you prove to me that you're not a narcissist it's like people want um <clears throat> a clean bill of health before you sleep with them and but you also need to um be vetting people for their mental health and bla has just joined us danger filled what's up back from the field We've got Jethro, Moldy Apple, Slow Boy, and we are uh, eating popcorn and doing TikToks. So I have, I recommend this popcorn. It's really good. I haven't had it before. Um, it's this kind. So let's try spicy because we're... Let's get some spicy TikToks. Ooh, chocolate truffles. So mo a lot of these are like hairstyles and recipes that I like to try. So what what is the wifey material paradox? Let's see what that means. There's no, okay, never mind. There's no sound on it. Okay. Um, you don't want to learn how to make chocolate truffles. You don't want to, you don't care about watercolors. What else we got? How to make a pearl necklace. Oh, what is a mother wound in women? Okay. My mom's great. I don't know why I saved this, but let's see what a mother wound is. What is a mother wound in women? Okay, here's a mum and here's her child, the daughter, and it's a difficult relationship for the child because it's a strained and difficult relationship because the mother has specific behaviours that's passing on to the daughter, which is making this childhood very difficult for this little girl, and she's growing up, modelling some behaviours and becoming a version of herself that is wounded okay so for say example the mother is abusive so say the mother is abusive to the little girl then this little girl is going to have a mistreatment wound so a mistreatment wound means that she's going to be open and available for other people to mistreat her in her adult life 
If the mother is unavailable, say the mother is emotionally devoid or unavailable physically or emotionally, then the little girl is going to grow up and attract in unavailable partners. She will be attracted to people that can't be consistently there for her because of that wound, because of that damage. Okay. If the mother is very critical and belittling and demeaning to the little girl, then she's going to become her own inner critic. She's going to have a low self-esteem and judge herself, put herself down in her adult life. She's going to have a lack of self-love. Okay, if the mother has generational trauma, so say the mother was born in the 60s or the 50s or way back when, then she's got her own trauma from previous generations of a patriarchal society. She will be passing down those belief systems to her to her daughter, and the daughter's going to be modelling that and perhaps finding it difficult to break out from those societal, you know, belief systems and programming. If the mother is codependent, then yes, the daughter is going to pick up, you know, weak boundaries herself. She's going to also become a people pleaser, a fixer. Okay, so what happens when we have a mother wound is this. We subconsciously honour our parents, A, in their generational trauma, and B, in the behavioural modelling. Okay, so... If you feel that you had a very difficult relationship with your mother as a child and you've picked up specific behaviours because of her, you know, parenting style and also from some of the trauma she might have passed down, then you can do this. Number one, you can look to heal um, any resentment towards your mother for the childhood experience and the way we do that is through a compassionate focus and releasing of past trauma past memories secondly taking real responsibility for any of these behaviors because look your mother's not going to take the responsibility you have to now start to take responsibility for your programming and look to change that going forward and the way we really change all of this stuff is inner child work belief system changing self-love and boundaries i have all these resources yeah so Obviously, we don't want to go to therapists who are not Christians. Um, I had a therapist who was an Orthodox priest, so I had the best of both worlds. Um, I don't think I would ever go to a normie therapist. The church is the therapy. The confession and the Eucharist is the healing, of course. Um, But there are some insights that we can glean to help us forgive people for how they have wronged us, um, but yeah, let's see, you don't care how to make a pearl necklace, how to tie a scarf, how to heat every room in your house, what's that? Do you want to warm every room in your house? Well, get a biscuit tin, hang it on a wall nail, and voila, you have a wall heater. Add a tea candle to the wall heater, like so, and light it. Now, the only thing with this method is you won't be able to stay in the room where this wall heater is. It's too hot. Such is the heat that comes from this wall heater. It seeps through the walls into other rooms. So you'll have to go into another room because it simply will be too hot here. So if you want to create the ultimate wall heater, get a biscuit tin, put a tea candle on it, uh, and light it up, please. Do you really think that would heat a room? A tea light on a tin? Maybe if the power goes out, now you know. <laughs> if the eclipse is ending the world and we have no heaters, you can just grab a tea light and your little Christmas cookie tin, put it on the wall, and you're good to go. Everybody, sound out what snack you're eating, because I'm done with this butter popcorn. I'm going to try a spicy one now. What's this guy talk about? What have I done? We don't get to watch morning cartoons anymore. So me and the boys, we thought we'd bring you one. That's Warner Von Braun, and that's Walt Disney. Walt, he was a big movie producer. Warner, he was part of the Nazi party. He was brought to America during Operation Paperclip. He was kind of considered the champion of NASA. They were pretty good buddies. Right before he checked out, Warner left us just one phrase on his tombstone. It was a Bible verse, Psalms 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And of course, everybody knows the history of NASA, right? Operation High Jump, Operation Deep Freeze, the founding of NASA, the Antarctic Treaty, Operation Fishbowl, and of course, the moon landing. Anyhow, let's check out the cartoon. It's one of my favorites. Pixar released a short film called Knick Knack. They showed you hot location after hot location where all the knickknacks have on sunglasses. 
Then they take you to a land far away towards the edge of the shelf. They call it Nome, Alaska, but they make the pun Gnome Sweet Gnome, showing you that this is your home. This character is not wearing sunglasses because he's at the edge of the world where the sun barely reaches the coldest place on Earth, Antarctica. He finds the edge, just like we did in Operation Deep Freeze. Then he proceeds to drill, just like they did in Russia. Then he tries to blow it up, just like we did over the Pacific Ocean. Again, symbolizing the edge of the known world. And what was the name of the operation we were trying to explode the firmament? Operation Fishbowl. And we see here how if he actually did escape from his home sweet home, beyond the firmament, he would be in water. Pixar obviously got the attention of Walt Disney in this short little film, because Disney Studios has released every single Pixar movie. After all, Disney Studios filmed Operation Deep Freeze, and Walt Disney is an honorary member because he was there when they found the firmament of heaven and where it meets the earth. <laughs> Okay, that's a little goofy. Um, I don't know about Flat Earth, but the patches of the uh, space program and NASA um, missions and things are really weird. Like, if you look into them, they're super devilish and all about dragons and Satan this and the big dragon that. So, there's definitely something weird going on. Oh. I wonder how that rocket launch went. So the APEP rockets, they should have fired all three of those by now to check the perturbations of the ionosphere is they, what they said they were doing, those three APEP rockets. And of course, APEP is the serpent deity, Apophis from ancient Egyptian mythology. If you've been watching your Eclipse Lore 2024, you should know who Apophis is. Should we keep going? More talks? More popcorn? What's up, guys? What are you eating for snacks? Paul does not appreciate uh, secular therapists. I don't either, really. It's funny because when I was thinking about going to therapy, I was like, there's not a dang therapist in the whole world that can help me because who's going to know about all of this stuff in my head? Conspiracy theories, SRA, uh, evil Disney. Like, it would take me... I couldn't even afford to pay somebody for the time it would take for me to explain to them <laughs> what's wrong with me and um, why therapy. Ooh. That's good. Spicy. Okay, so this one's called Fiery Hot. Yum yum. Made with coconut oil. It's good. More tops. Oh, that's spicy. What's this? Matthew Barney's The Cree Master Cycle. Ew. Okay, let's let's see what it is. Cause this has to do with movies. Be perfectly honest, Cree Master 2 surprised me. It was terrible in ways that I wasn't expecting. Okay, so before we even get started with anything, I'm going to lay it out there. Cree Master is bad. These are the films that normal people imagine when they hear art film. Nightmarish, ugly, and senseless, but in a way that's somehow extremely boring. The entire reason we're going to dig into it is so that we can learn to understand bad art. It does just about everything wrong, and the things that it does right barely break mediocre. Honestly, dissecting Cree Master is a bit like living with someone who has extreme dementia. So much is going wrong that it feels like a great moment if they remember to put pants on before they leave the house. Be perfectly honest, Cree Master 2's... So, I don't know... Oh, Balenciaga's favorite meta-conceptualist is the guy who made this Cree Master cycle. And it's supposed to be some kind of artsy, famous film that was too gross for us to even uh, analyze. 
Oh, here's an interesting one. The Cabbage Patch Kids and the Orphan Trains. Y'all heard of that? Jay doesn't believe in that one. <laughs> I don't know, though. Let's see. We continued to look through these old postcards. A very strange and unsettling trend started to become apparent. It began with just simple baby postcards. At first thought, seems like any ordinary postcard. But as with the same sky postcard mystery where the author began to see a trend of a variety of postcards? Well, there's a category of postcards that deserves its own name and label, but it doesn't seem very well known, as there are no websites or videos explaining this topic. We shall call it the mystery of the repopulation postcards. There are other names for this style, such as baby postcards. By the end of this video, You'll be shocked at how many of these there are. We're talking in the thousands. We found one reference to what these cards were in a book on Amazon named Babylon, Surreal Babies, in which the author describes these same peculiar 1900s postcards and how they were deeply influential to many famous artists, including Salvador Dali. Yet, the author even admits that little is known of their history. In order to understand why we've labeled them repopulation postcards, a thorough understanding of resets, tartaria, orphan trains, incubators, asylums, and odd fellows will be necessary. These cards depict babies being grown. Someone says, okay, so this is, they're saying the last reset caused so many orphans that you could just go buy babies. And there is uh, a lot of French and American art showing babies growing up like cabbages. And that's where you get the Cabbage Patch Kids from. Somebody just put a funny comment, what did they say? Someone says, I get my conspiracies from the hood healers. Yep. Um, so, so the Cabbage Patch Babies, Tartaria, um, Orphan Trains, that all goes together. There was a, uh, a book on Amazon all about these too. And, and they had a, there's something weird to this because of the World's Fairs. You could just go like buy incubated babies. At, and there was like pictures of babies half off. So what's going on with babies at the turn of the century? With I don't know. Um, let's see. Balenciaga drama was a distraction. When you see that one, let's see. So Balenciaga, huh? I've honestly been too afraid to make a video about it. It's so evil and disturbing. I don't even want to talk about it. And I think a lot of creators did a very very good job explaining the entire thing, especially the designers. Lada Volkova, the other girl who's like a witch, the one who's friends with Jay-Z. You can't make this shit up. Another thing you can't make up is what's been going on in California. I swear to God, I heard a creator the other day say something like, I am theorizing that perhaps Balenciaga might be taking the heat on this on purpose. Why would they do that? To distract us from something else. What would be so far gone and more disturbing than what we witnessed with Balenciaga and everything else behind it. Yeah, why is she eating? It's a TikTok. Like, <laughs> I'll tell you. Sorry, these m ms are just unbelievable. So in California, there is a bill that had 7,000 sex offender criminals released this week. 7,000. 7,000. 7,000. Why? Well, get ready. Gavin Newsom says, prison is just overpopulated. It's over-fucking-populated. It's overpopulated, so let him out. Overpopulated with pedos who have committed crimes with children under 14. Let that sink in. The district attorney said that it's just time. we got to let them go. Even though research states that pedos who uh, 
commit a crime against a child, an SA crime, will almost more than likely reoffend. Now, as a behavior therapist, I studied very, very much into the bizarre world of strange fetishes. This is not a fetish. This is just a way of thinking, a way of life for these people. There is almost zero, zero way that you can rehabilitate them. <laughs> it's just what they're attracted to. It's just what they like. It will never change. This, ladies and gentlemen, these types of criminals. So, yeah, what she's saying is the Balenciaga was a distraction from them letting out non-violent offenders is what they're called. So, yeah, if they are in jail for petty theft, stuff like that, like shoplifting, um, PDF file stuff, then definitely they're going to be let out. Someone mentioned insane asylums. That's coming up right down the pike, two TikToks away. But yeah, that was kind of gross. She's eating M&Ms right on camera. I mean, as I'm eating popcorn, but we're going to be here for hours. We're going to be here maybe like several hours because I don't have anything else to do today. And we've got some donuts. Woohoo! Where's my donut? It's around here somewhere. Maybe I'm sitting on it. Okay, donuts. Um, from Teacup, five donuts. One coffee for my ortho sister. Thank you, Teacup. We've got Stephen Paul 4444, $12. I'm at work, and this eclipse has flushed out all the new agers and pagans. P.S. Any book suggestions to learn neuro-linguistic programming NLP? Uh, I don't know why you want to learn that, but yes, I know how, uh, let me look it up. It is called, it, it actually has a wizard on the cover. It's a series of books. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Neuro-linguistic programming book. It's called, dang. has magic in the title. I'm trying to find it. It's creepy looking. It's 70s like art. Dang. Okay, let me think about that for like one minute because maybe it'll pop back in my head. It's called Magic New Let me Google it. So that's the funny thing about me and like spells and magic and NLP. I can't be bothered to learn how to manipulate people because I don't, I don't care about your opinion that much. Like I don't need your validation. So I don't need to learn a spell or anything to trick you. I don't need to program you to think how I want you to think because I just can't. That's too much energy on my part. I'd rather just be honest. That's why I'm not a good liar because I don't have a very good memory and I can't like keep track of all the lies. So I'll just tell the truth. That way you don't have to remember anything. I can't find it. New linguistic programming book. Well, a bunch come up, but not the one that I had. It literally oh here it is it has a wizard on the cover the structure of magic is what it's called yeah structure of magic neuralist neuro linguistic programming by virginia Sater and gregory bateson so this is one of a series and that's the cover of it so you see it is connected to magic and spell casting so yeah structure of magic neuro linguistic programming what else um Paul, $25, Sunglass Man, Donut, and Moon. Thank you so much. Um, Melissa, $20 for fun eclipse streaming. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. I'm not scared anymore because I have you. 
Should we keep going with the talks or what? How about insane asylums? Okay, this goes with the Cabbage Patch Kids, the Old Great Reset, Tartars, uh, Mud Floods, and insane asylums. People often ask me if there was a reset in the early 1800s, wouldn't everybody have to be in on it? Surely someone would have said something. But that's just the thing. Anyone that didn't follow the narrative or speak about the old world was thrown into one of these insane asylums. Did you know that in the 1800s, all across America and Canada, these insane asylums was opened? Understanding that many of these cities was only just founded where do you think they was getting all of these insane people from? <laughs> and how did they know there was going to be so many that they decided to build these massive structures to hold them in? This is the Central Lunatic Asylum in Ohio, built in 1832. And it looks just like a repurposed castle. This is the Columbia State Hospital, also in Ohio. And this was the biggest building in the United States until the Pentagon was built. And if you've been following me, you will know that I don't believe they even built this hospital. I believe it was from the old world, and they repurposed it as a detention center for anyone that spoke about the truth. I mean, just look. This is the St. Vincent Hospital in St. Louis, and they say it was built in 1894 and opened in 1895. So you're trying to tell me this took one year to build? So like I said, anyone that spoke about the reset was silence. People often ask me yeah, like, if there was a reset. What is going on with these gigantic insane asylums? Where are all these insane people coming from? I can't, I can't even imagine the dark, like, experiments going on. I don't know. What else we got? Gucci fashion brand's new campaign recreates scenes from Stanley Kubrick film. That's weird. Do you want more Balenciaga? Um, how to cut your own hair. Ooh, look at this fish. Isn't he pretty? <laughs> It's like if a fish were a supermodel. That's so crazy. A giant koi. I'd love to have a cool fish like that. So there's some more hairstyles. Um, what else? Oh, here's a good one that I talk about a lot. Fabrics have different frequencies. Let's look at that. Oh, it's just a caption. It says different fabrics have different frequencies. Polyester has a frequency of 10 megahertz, same as a diseased person. This also causes infertility. Cotton is 110 megahertz. Wool and linen is 5,000 megahertz, but woven together, they cancel out. So maybe that's why um, the Bible says don't mix your uh, fabrics. What else we got? Okay, look y'all what I found. Coming home for crew. Coming out of the rocks. Oh, rainbow. Y'all. Check that out. Icicles? It's from all the different minerals and stuff coming out of the rocks. That's kind of cool. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yes, that movie, Cure for Wellness, exactly. Uh, that was so weird. He was like an ancient fish eel man because eels are so mysterious. They are still trying to study and find out how eels uh, spawn Looks like they all go to the same place somewhere in like Bermuda Triangle or some weird crazy place like that and they still don't know what's going on with eels. But yeah, Cure for Wellness is all about eel people. Okay. Who is the craziest philosopher? Let's find out. Oh man. No sound. Sorry. Guess we'll never know. What else we got? Shrouded Turin. Stress is contagious. The stress hormone cortisol actually leaks out of our skin through our sweat and particles of cortisol hang around in the atmosphere around us 
So, so cortisol is a steroid hormone. So like other steroid hormones like estrogen and progesterone, women who live together or work closely together will synchronize their menstrual cycles within two months. That's how much our hormones affect each other. Now with cortisol, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, but if somebody is stressed, particularly if they're repressing it, so their cortisol levels are high and it's not being expressed by speaking or exercising, then that literally drifts into the atmosphere and goes through your skin into your blood and artificially raises your cortisol levels. So stress is contagious. The stress hormone cortisol actually leaks out of our skin. So that is crazy. And you will know if you've ever been around a person who's stressed out a lot, they make you stress too. And they are finding out that this has physiological effects as well as psychological Okay, what else we got? What's this crazy lady going to talk about? If you just tuned in, we're doing random talks. We're all uh, signing off on our location, making sure everybody's okay. We are doing wellness checks in the chat to make sure that nobody has been consumed by giant cicadas uh, or has been harmed by the eclipse because I know that direct shade can be very dangerous. So, we're watching talks, eating popcorn, drinking kombucha. I haven't tried the caramel corn yet, but I'm still on the spicy one. Tell me what you're eating in the chat, where you are, if you're okay, if anything interesting is happening. And uh, here's some more talks. No, hairstyle, we don't want that. What's this? Shroud or turn? So, this is the part two of the frequency of clothing, the holy fabric. So, in part one, we learned that wool and linen and organic cotton have some of the highest frequency of fibers and synthetic plastic fibers like rayon bamboo polyester build static and attract emf and are unnatural also when using synthetic dyes and bleach it can actually cancel out these frequencies or even if these high fiber are woven together they cancel each other out so from a Western point of view, we're actually relearning why these high frequency fibers were so important to ancient people. The Shroud of Turin and Egyptian mummies were both wrapped in flax linen. According to Japanese researchers, studies have shown that bedridden patients do not develop bed sores where linen has been used. Wearing linen clothing also helps decrease skin diseases like rash, eczema and psoriasis the description of the tabernacle which formed the central point of worship for the tribe of israel historical records tell us that the currents were made of fine linen revelation 19 8 exodus 28 2 leviticus 16 all have references to high frequency fibers so you definitely want to wear fibers that make you feel alive and heal so this is the part two so this got me started on replacing all of my synthetic clothes with natural fibers um i'd say more than half of my wardrobe now um is natural fibers especially your undergarments that's the most important thing um what else we got i don't even know what, nope no sound on that one okay more hairstyles. I really am saving a lot of hair. Oh, this one's cute. Let's just watch it. ladies maid or something like that because I just I can't see back there and I don't have time I would dress like this all the time
What's a slave princess? Oh, no. Should we click on that one? Only 10 days later, Brittany was paraded in front of cameras for a photo about with then presidential candidate Hillary Clinton to give her political campaign a boost. A moment where Brittany's discomfort could hardly be mistaken. In a leaked email released by WikiLeaks, we learned that heads of the Democratic National Committee were aware that Brittany was being forced to work against her will and that her team wouldn't allow her to quit because she was making too much money. Lauren Durham wrote this about Brittany to the DNC finance chairman, Jordan Kaplan. She's a poor soccer kid who wanted to quit the game and be normal a long time ago. But her parents, manager, lawyers won't let because she's too much of a cash cow. So even though powerful players were aware of Britney's enslavement, they not only remained silent, but had no problem using her as a political tool to endorse a presidential candidate during an election year. Vice President Kamala Harris served as California's Attorney General for six years of Britney's conservatorship. As Attorney General, Kamala Harris and her office ignored requests from Britney advocates to take action. Nina Simone's granddaughter claimed only... Well, that's part one. I don't have part two saved. But yeah, Brittany, if you want to know more about that, me and Rachel have done hours and hours about Brittany and even her book. Okay, what's this one? You'll never look at the sky the same after this. I am shook. What is that? Hi guys, I was terrified to post this, but I'm going to anyway. I took this shot this day because I noticed this big, long, black cloud in the sky and I played with the lighting on it. Because I saw a guy on TikTok playing with the lighting on things in the sky and noticed that when I did, it still stood out. And guys, brace yourself for this. What is it? First of all, I'm going to apologize for this. Can you guys see this? Oh, it's weird. There, this is like... I was blown away. It looks like a grid. And I'm sorry again for the shake. Okay, weird sky stuff. I don't know. <clears throat> more hair okay here's what is this the problem or pornography okay what's this guy gonna say married men are more likely to experience divorce if they watch porno any amount of pornography and it's sort of uh you know the more pornography they use the more likely they are to to get divorced i mean this is a very recent invention too sort of streaming digital pornography I've heard that researchers are having difficulty even studying this simply because they can't really find a control group. They, you know, there's no young men who don't watch porn, at least at least have never not been exposed to it. And so this is a very difficult thing for them to even, even right. study. Well, it's, an, it's another indication of the emergence of polygamy because it's a virtual polygamy. You can have an mm -hmm. unlimited number of attractive sexual partners. Now, it's all virtual. That is a transformative technology. I mean, I mean you there's see these, more pictures uh, of, of nude women in one day than anybody in history would have ever seen in their entire life. Married men are more likely to experience divorce. If um, yeah, so that's kind of blackpilling. They can't even do studies on it because they can't find a control group that doesn't. Um, so what... I guess while we're on the subject of it, let's just talk about old Nala for a second because like I said, me and Rachel did a show um, about that and this story is just picking up so much traction because she was on Michael Knowles. Now, I don't even know how many disclaimers I have to put. I think you guys know me by now. I'm, I'm a sweet person. I don't wish anybody, um, you know harm or bad consequences or suffering. Um, I'm not hateful. I'm not envious. But there's something about this story that just does not sit right with me. And uh, I think Rachel would agree. And I watched that entire interview with Nala and Michael Knowles. Now, <laughs> 
as if I had any shred of respect left for anybody at Daily Wire. This just kind of <laughs> obliterated all that. I don't think that... <sighs> I don't even know what to say, you guys. It's just... Here's, I, I drew this pie chart because I took my whole Saturday afternoon watching Michael Knowles and Nala because I want to believe the good in people. I want to believe the best. I want to believe that she's honest and telling the truth. But my conspiracy brain, my, um, my spidey sense, you would say, is tingling off the charts. Um, so I, I wasn't the only one. So, from the comments on the Michael Knowles Nala interview that lasted like 140 minutes, so it was like my whole Saturday afternoon, I was just going to tune in, get the gist of it, and leave, but it kept getting crazier and crazier, y'all. So, <laughs> half of the commenters in green, or almost half, 45%, I would say, think she's full of it, okay? Uh, the other half is Team Nala, a 5% of the commenters expressed their sexual attraction to Nala. <laughs> so that's just the people who commented that. And then 5%, the orange, were roasting Knowles for being flirtatious. Um, and that is what came across to me too. So... I am on, uh, throughout the whole interview, you guys, I was vacillating in between, because if you have seen on Twitter, there's a whole flame war, and everybody is divided right down the middle, and if you do not believe her, then you are a fake Christian with a black heart, and you need to seek, uh, you know, repentance for being so mean. I guess I'm just Mrs. Mean, okay? Because I, I don't even want to say because she scares me. I'm literally, I, I'm legitimately frightened of this person now. And so many blue check marks are rushing to defend her. And I was one of them. You will remember that when she first converted, we were in California. So this was what, like March 15th when the whole thing happened. She got baptized. She put it online. Everyone was like, she's a used up whatever. And I was like, no, you can redeem, you know, God can do miracles, and I posted a picture of St. Mary of Egypt, one of our most venerated saints, and her feast day is coming up in Lent. Um, I said, you know, God is great. He can take, like, I, I'm not forgetting the conversion of Paul and how lots of people in the Bible did horrible, horrible things, and they worked it out, and they came to be saints at the end. So, it is totally possible. God can forgive anything. Yes, of course, anybody can do a total 180. Um, but, but, that's a big but. Now, hear me out, you guys, because let's put our smart people brains on, okay? Let's uh, stop being slow boys. Because, you know, Christians are really the softest target there is because they have soft hearts. They want to see the best in people. They want these things to be true. They are true, but they also are rooting for people. We are rooting for them, obviously, yes. But <laughs> looking at this in a, you know, I was a conspiracy theorist before I ever even converted. So I'm still always going to have that suspicion of somebody who makes it to the peak of visibility in alternative media or in, you know, the, the normal media. I'm going to have some questions. I'm going to see things from a different perspective, okay? So half of the chatters think she's lying. Half of the chatters think she's wonderful, and anyone who questions her is a piece of doo-doo. Um, you know, 5% of the people think she's still got it, and they, they would. They have expressed that they would, quote-unquote. Um, and then... Like I said, 5% of the people were roasting Knowles for making googly eyes. And this is what freaking Candace Owen did to Andrew Tate. Is sit across the table from a guy with a rap sheet a mile long, a, a cornographer, and just like...
completely whitewash his whole persona and make googly fleur eyes at him. So this is getting gross, you guys. So let me just go point by point over the entire Nala Michael Knowles interview. So she was a pastor's kid. She was raised in a Christian family. Um, so she knows Bible speak. This is why she's coming across as so spiritually advanced because she grew up listening to all of this as a child. Um, I don't know if she had any trouble in her past. I don't know if she was essayed. She didn't really say. Um, but she, you know, she is giving the impression that she did not have to do this. And if you listen to a lot of her other interviews, the stuff she says is scary, dude. Straight up sociopath. Can Jesus heal that? Yes, he can. Can he do it overnight? Yes. <laughs> is that, um, probable? No. But, so she says she had a lot of pressure to be in the spotlight and be perfect as a pastor's kid and and this kind of made her like who she was um so she did not have to she had a loving family she was not t-r-a-f-f -F. she was not forced into it she was not broke and had to you know find a way to fill her belly by doing o-f um she pretty much broke her family's heart by becoming this person and then she goes on to talk about her boyfriend looking at corn or her, her partner who also had an OF channel. Uh, she says he was disassociated from their intimacy and um, <clears throat> she kind of played a victim about him looking at corn when they are both corn makers. Um, so... And she has said much, much worse things that she does in interviews like she loves to cheat. And they said, why don't you just break up with the person if they're not fulfilling you? And she says, because I get a rush from the cheating. Like, it's not the same if I'm single and just sleeping with somebody. I like the feeling of duping people. So these are like giant red flags, you guys. I'm not saying she's not redeemed. I'm not saying she's insincere. I'm just saying let's, let's put some... Uh, discernment on and look how she's being um platformed and projected into the social media milieu right now someone said saint mary of egypt is obviously a great example but let's not forget she spent 47 years in the desert with nothing but prayers to god exactly now there's of girls who convert every day i'm sure but they don't get on daily wire and they don't get on every talk show i mean honestly we were having dinner with jamie kennedy after our live show and he says well i'm gonna have that girl on my show and this was before i'd watched her interviews or anything like this and i said oh well uh i texted a orthodox article about saint mary of egypt and i said give this to her and tell her you know pray to saint mary to help you so i was rooting for her but the more i'm seeing the more questions uh i have about this so she played the victim about her boyfriend looking at corn when she has done and said way worse things. Um, she says she only likes nudity because she loves God's creation. Um, she knows words like disassociation. She, <laughs> um, you guys, you have to learn to recognize fake crying because I'm a crier, okay? I cry all the time. I cried this morning. You don't hear me crying about it. I don't get online and cry. I don't cry in public. Anybody who's a crier, who gets choked up, <clears throat> who gets too emotional, you can't speak, okay? You don't have, like, there's a difference between Hollywood tears and real tears that come from a place of, like, anger, frustration, sadness, grief. Uh, you don't just talk right through it. It, there is a disconnect in your brain. I think it's called alexidemia or alex something like that. Where um, your vocabulary is, uh, the pathways to that is shut off by your emotions. Now you can like scream, cry, and express yourself of why you're crying or why you're upset or you know, you let it out like that. That is a normal reaction, but you don't, like, have tears running down your face and deliver some kind of line at the same time. That's just not real. 
So then it gets weird, y'all. Okay, so a yeah, I couldn't imagine crying on camera. Someone says the silliest Billy. Someone who cries all the time like me like that is super embarrassing i would rather die than cry in public i will go into the closet <laughs> into the bathroom and lock myself in the bathroom get it out and come out like nothing happened okay that's that's real crying on camera is not real crying on cue when you're talking about something hard or touching it's not real okay um so she's deep in the of She's making millions of dollars. Um, out of nowhere comes this guy who is some kind of Prince Charming. He's like the perfect guy for her. He is a uh, military, she said, Air Force and a gamer. She said they became friends on TikTok and he didn't even know about her OnlyFans. Like, come on, everybody who's anybody who's seen whatever and you can't escape these things. You just log on and you are forced to participate in a lot of these discourses because it's just there. Like I never searched up Andrew Tate. I never searched up Pearl. Okay. But they're constantly bombarding me even after I block these people and mute them and like <laughs> nuke the connection between my profile and theirs, you still get it. So I don't buy it that this guy never heard of her before and never looked up her OF. Okay. Um, so he comes, sweeps her off her feet. They meet up once in Nashville and they decide to get married like right away. And what did I say when we were on the show with Rachel? I said, you don't meet someone and get married right away. That is Christianity. There are proper protocols. And if Nall ever hears this, there are ways to convert without making everyone question your sincerity. And that's the church's way, okay? That it's at least a year that you are inquiring, you are catechumen, you're learning, you're, <clears throat> you're changing your personality before you even get to the altar of baptism and chrismation, okay? And it's not about a feeling, it's a commitment. So this perfect ex-military or current military man sweeps her off her feet, um, come to find out, marries her on Easter Sunday. So that that's going to make all those incels so mad that says she'll never find a man to marry her because uh, you can all suck it because she just got married on Easter Sunday. Um, and now they are going to them team up together and have a platform for XOF girls. Um, on TikTok to have a ministry. Now you don't just go from one core platform to Christian platform and have a ministry, okay? It's not right. Um, oh, and here's a weird thing. How did she get to be one of the top content creators on OF? She said, because I know how to play a lot of characters. So she knew that if she cosplayed all of these anime characters and all of these hopping bunnies or whatever else, like, stupid cartoon character that these weirdos are cooming to, she can play it. So is this just another character? Now, don't roast me. I'm not a mean person, okay? I'm not, a, like, a gatekeeping, horrible, hypocrite Christian. I'm just saying, let's be smart about this. Um, what else? <sighs> she said some weird things at the end that I, I rewound it and I tried to find it, but it was, I couldn't find exactly what she said. But the point was that she had a problem with feeling nothing and that she knew that she could like destroy things by this way that she was being the sociopathic behavior. And it was very dangerous. And she said, um, I was capable of burning the world down or something, destroying the world because I felt nothing. And it was just like, girl, you need to talk to a therapist about what you just said because that is some serious uh, dark triad behavior. 
Okay. Oh, and Michael Knowles, he's an aspiring, no, I'm, it's a joke, but he did. Before he converted, he made a, a sleazy video also, like a student film that was about, um, what was it called? About a sorority fraternity that was just like an SEX club. What was it called? It's called The House of Shades student film on YouTube. Go look at uh, Michael Knowles. So I, I just kept thinking of that meme um, from Spider-Man where he's like, uh, I'm a bit of a scientist myself. And Michael Knowles is like, ah, I'm a bit of a spicy actor myself. Let's eat some spicy popcorn because we're talking about spicy stuff. What do you think? Am I too mean? Am I black hearted? Hmm. Am I a fake ass? Christian what else oh okay so here's the point that I just had to say enough and is enough because he's calling her ruby red he's being weird about it he is um oh and I I joined the chat room and I all I said was that red hair dye is probably toxic because hair dye is toxic I'm sorry it seeps into your scalp and uh, into your bloodstream and all those chemicals can cause a lot of problems. It can cause cancer. I'm telling people this because I care about you. I don't want you to eat poison. I don't want you to put it on your head. Everybody's coming after me in the comments. Oh, what a uh, hair color is uh, modest enough for you. And I'm like, it's not about modesty. It's about toxicity. I don't care what color her hair is. It's not like, Yes, it looks bad, but also it's probably hurting her, which I don't want to see anybody get hurt. That's one of the things I learned in therapy. I have a OCD about harming people, so it's almost impossible. I'm pretty much one of the most harmless creatures there is because I have obsessive compulsive disorder about not hurting things. Um, but so here he is calling her Ruby Red, saying, I'm a Casanova. I've always thought of myself as a kind of Casanova. Um... They start talking about Garden of Eden and temptation and how good it feels and everyone's commenting, uh, take your jaw off the floor, Knowles. And he's saying stuff like those delicious tempting apples. Just weird, weird stuff. It, it's at the very end. So if you want to know the weirdest, I would say like go back to the, the last 25 minutes or so and you'll just see like why is he saying... If that was my husband, I'd be like, what? Delicious, delicious temptation apples. Someone says, no, you're right. It's total grift. She's gotten so much coverage from this. She's probably going to make way more money doing this shtick. Okay, so <clears throat> here's my thing. It's like she probably, she's smart enough to be w one of the top content creators. Nine million dollars. There's nothing to sneeze at. And everyone's like, uh, what, you think she should give back her money and would that make it better? like no keep the money I mean you earned it with your body but just step out of the spotlight for a minute until you can get some maturity and then I logged on Twitter to see after the show was over to see kind of like what people were saying about this and it was still like you know pretty much split 50 50 uh I don't believe her and then the team Nala is like well you're a piece of SHIT if you don't believe her um and someone posted one of her corn picks and something shifted in me and I just got so mad and I'm like now I've seen this girl's butthole against my will on Twitter full on chocolate starfish in my face and I just like I'm so sick of everyone platforming this disgusting stuff like I've seen inside Nala's body just scrolling on Twitter and it it really I used to have so much more compassion for this type of stuff than I'm they're they're wearing my patience out is where I'm going with this I did not mean to see the pink part of uh, Nala's anatomy inside her body okay but I twice now two different threads about her and I know she's not posting it. I know it's some dude trying to say she's always going to be an, you know, W-H-O-R-E. But it's got to stop, y'all. This 
Corn has got to stop. And who financed this? Men did. Women are doing it, yes, but the men are paying for it. And just like, uh, we just watched that TikTok about how everyone's doing it, um, or mostly everyone's doing it. It's given me, like, some kind of PTSD. <laughs> I'm so tired of whatever. I'm tired of fresh and fit. I'm tired of talking about prostitutes. I wish we could just turn away from it, stop paying attention to it, stop paying money to it, and it will go away, but I don't know. That's my take on Nala. I'm literally scared of this person now. I hope she never finds this because she frightens me. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? It hurts our mental health. Yes, it hurts your neocortex. The things that you need for, you know, like love, empathy, all of those uh, decision making. It will make Swiss cheese out of your brain. You remember that show Quantum Leap? And he's like, can't remember anything because his brain is Swiss cheese. That's what corn will do to your brain. Anyway, should we do some more talks? What's going on? We There's no giant uh, dragon. Where's the dragon comet? What was it called? Devil's Comet? Was that passing over? Nothing interesting is happening. I'm glad, actually. Let's do some more talks. Let's start from the most recent, because we were back like a couple years ago when I first joined TikToks talking about Cabbage Patch Kids and stuff. Let's go to the, the front of the line. What have I saved recently? Oh. Yeah, so now she's a trad wife. And guess what is uh, trending? Trad wife content is blowing up because it is an example of conservative men's fantasy yes yes and yes you have these beautiful women in their 1950s dresses or in their dresses literally pregnant and cooking in the kitchen and if you don't think that pregnancy kink is a real thing look for it find out do your research and they're not portraying these women you know cleaning toilets on their hands and knees scrubbing mold off the shower door they're not yelling at their kids or wiping boogers in the middle of the night while the kid has 103 free fever and screaming. They're beautiful. They're in the kitchen with their makeup perfect, just like a man wants to come home to. Hopefully she's standing there with some sort of drink in her hand because everything has been handled for him. And they do a hell of a job selling it. And when they do call their husbands in to help, it's so that he can help do this one part because he's much stronger than she is still feeding the fantasy everyone needs to understand you're going to do what you want to do my only reason for making these videos is to maybe open your eyes to see that there is another side of this i can't tell you how many people i'm a life coach i talk to how many women i talk to who are like late 30s maybe mid 40s that age group and their husbands have decided that they're done working that they're just done. They go in the basement and they grab the PS5 and they're done. And their wives are like, well, what do you mean you're done? And these are college educated, high income earners and they're just done. What you gonna do? I keep saying in these videos, what would you do tomorrow if you needed to replace your husband's income, your partner's income? I'm not even saying if you leave him, if he leaves you, none of that. If you just had to replace his income for some reason, what would you do if you needed to get life insurance, I'm sorry, health insurance tomorrow? So, what would, yeah, her, I don't know who this is. I just saved it because the, the trad wife corn is coming. Um, remember that conservative dad's calendar? That was so awful. And the whole like libertarian, uh, lady with the pie and the cross and it's like semi uh pornographic and she even said yeah it's demonic what are you gonna do about it joking of course 
What do you guys think? We basically told a great generation. Oh. Told a great generation of young women, don't get married, don't have kids, go get a corporate job. And then in their early 30s, they get really upset because they say, you know, the boys don't want to date me anymore because they're not at their prime. And people get mad when I say that. Well, it's just true. If you're in your early 30s, I'm sorry. It's like you're not as attractive in the dating pool as you were in the early 20s. But again, you have your corporate so job. And this stuff really grinds my gears because there's so much more important things that we could be talking about than is a 20-year-old hotter than a 30-year-old. Like, it just is so stupid. That's, so I thought, you, you know... I have made a lot of videos attacking um, a lot of the modern feminist ideals, especially the whole I don't need a man thing. And before you attack me, uh, go ahead and watch my previous videos first. Biologically speaking, yes, women are in their prime in their 20s. But I want to talk about the other part, which is when he's like, oh, well, I hope you go and enjoy your careers. I am so sick and tired of the stereotype that women in their 30s are just these cold women that chose their careers over having a family. Because women in their 30s right now grew up in the 80s and the 90s. We didn't grow up in that I don't need a man era. We grew up with the Little Mermaid. This is what I think actually happened. And this day and age, you don't need to be a career woman to survive. Anybody can get a job. Any woman can get a job. And I think when you take away the survival aspect of it and you want to now marry like a good man, you want to marry somebody that's going to be a good husband, a good father, um, a lot of the men don't fit that bill. I love my dad so much. Um, he was an amazing father to me. But realistically, would my mom have married him at 21 years old if she didn't need to? No. And she will admit that. And my dad will even admit that. There is no woman that I know personally who is single in their 30s because they chose to. They're single in their 30s because in their 20s, they didn't meet a good man who would be a good husband and a good father. And I'm so sick and tired of the gold digger term being thrown around because at the end of the day, especially if you're conservative, do you not agree that men are supposed to be the provider? We're looking for providers. And in this day and age, I'm sorry, there are not a lot of provider men who are honest, who I think will raise my children to also be good, honest people. And I'm not somebody that's going to sit around and say, I don't need a man, women don't need men. But what we need is good men. And I don't know where a lot of these good men are anymore. And the ones that are there, they're already married. And I know that the same thing could be said about women. But at the end of the day, like, I just feel like this generation is so messed up. We have women trying to be men. We have men trying to be women. And then we're acting like there's just a bunch of women going, I don't need no man. And I chose my career, blah, 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 blah. I, I've, ne I've never actually seen that with my own eyes. I feel like it's, it's make-believe in Hollywood. I have never seen any woman in their 30s who, if they found a good man, would give all of that up for their career. And then we have the dating apps on top of that. Everybody thinks that there's somebody else out there. There's somebody else out there. There are a lot of variables to why things are where they're at now. But I promise you that the main problem is not that there's a bunch of women in their 30s and not wanting to have a family. And on top of all of that, are there really... Um, she's kind of right and kind of, um, we're kind of past that now because I'm sure you've all heard of the... 4B movement in Korea, so they are definitely totally eschewing marriage, family, sex, and dating, um, and it's getting big. The movement's getting pretty big. What do you guys think? Let's go to the middle here. A lot of these are deleted because they're conspiracy, and they probably just... Uh, got in trouble for it. Let's see. Taylor Swift is a Luciferian Jezebel. What's that? And um, with each other. And it's incredibly sad because this is the Antichrist. I mean, you only need to look at the lyrics 
to see. It's basically Apollyon the Destroyer, this female version of Baphomet singing from the pit. Look at this. I don't like your kingdom keys. They once belonged to me. You asked me for a place to sleep. Ooh. Let's pause this for a second because someone says, Did Jamie accept raids? Yes, I do. Um, I should have that feature on. So if anybody wants to come over here and raid, that would be fun. Um, Jim Bob is rap. I like Jim Bob. I like his audience. So yeah, if we can get some more Jim Bobs over here, that would be fun. Right now we're looking at Taylor Swift is a witch, a Luciferian Jezebel. Locked me out and threw a feast. It's like sympathy for the devil through a feast that reminds me of the Last Supper. So we start on that storm scene, um, which we've seen many times, in the grave, the graveyard. Maybe this is a reference to maybe Sheol in the Bible. Uh, remember, this is about this Antichrist figure rising from the pit. This is all sung in rebellion of the Father. She's like, I don't like the games you, you make me play, the fool. Like the, the role you made me play. The fool. the fool. You made me play the fool. You know, this is like, literally like personifying the voice of the devil from the pit. So do you see what I'm saying here? This antichrist figure rising from death. You. And then coming into the jewellery, the diamonds... That depiction of Lucifer. So this is that Lucifer figure yet again. It's that Lucifer figure rising from death. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. This is Luciferian propaganda. This is that false Christ figure with snakes on her rings. So, no, I don't like you. So she, here she is in her diamonds. You see the mirrors and the portals opening like a veil. Look. You see that? It's opening like a veil, an inversion of Christ, ripping the veil. Oftentimes blasphemes in these inverted copycat ways. Thank you. you see the way they open there? And we go into this scene which is just like a counterfeit holy of holies. So we've got the veil. If you know your Bible, you'll, you'll understand what's going on here. The veil is ripping and we're going in to a counterfeit holy of holies, a Luciferian Freemasonic counterfeit. So notice we're in like a womb situation here. We're, we're underground. We're in a place where there's no natural light, like a Freemasonic temple, and you have black and gold everywhere. It's that alchemical reference, this Kabbalistic false antichrist seen with her on the throne, very blasphemous, in a red dress. So she's playing that Lucifer devil figure on the throne. So this is the um, video, Look What You Made Me Do. And if I remember correctly, the end of it is all of her different personalities in one scene talking to each other. So that's what we talk about all the time, MKUltra, disassociation. And don't you think that those kind of people who are recruiting for these programs are going to look at the top content creators on the top corn sites. Or is that just me? I'm just a tinfoil hat, I guess. I'm a mean, I'm already a bad Christian, I know that, but like, I don't know. What else do we have? Something about Bill Gates. What's this? Keeping it real with Michelle, y'all. Okay, Bill Gates is at it again. He apparently has funded millions to NGO claiming that kids are born sexual and kids as young as 10 years old should learn about commercial sex work. I'm going to go ahead and call this man out. He is a professional pimp and need to be arrested. But I absolutely love what my boy Jack said about this whole curriculum and the funding of this agenda. Curriculum approved by Planned Parenthood is being used right now by teachers in Sacramento City Schools. The lesson plan encourages more supportive discussions about casual sex and eliminates women from pregnancy conversations to promote gender inclusive language. Uh, Jack Moore is the CEO of the, uh, the Brewer Group and a former NFL player and joins us now. 
Uh, Jack, what do you make of this lesson plan? Uh, it should be shocking, but sadly it's not. Yeah, it's very sickening, you know, working with youth uh, as much as I do. Uh, seeing these type of things is disturbing because you, uh, you you understand the vulnerability of all of these kids and how young that they are, uh, kids that are trying to figure out and identify who they are. Uh, sexuality is something that's always a hard conversation, but it's one that when you bring in confusion, uh, you're bringing in manipulation. Uh, and manipulation is witchcraft. And I think that's something that we have to understand is that the spirituality of these children, uh, we are completely undermining it. That last part, though. Keeping it with Michelle, y'all. Okay, Bill Gates is at it again. He apparently has funded millions to NGO claiming that kids are born sexual and kids as young as 10 years old should learn about commercial sex work. I'm going to go ahead and call this man out. He is a professional pimp and need to be arrested. But I absolutely love what my boy Jack said about this whole curriculum and the funding of this agenda. Curriculum. So there's Bill Gates, and we all know our favorite uh, Professor Kinsey, Alfred Kinsey, who is where we get the idea of what is normal in sexual behavior. Uh, we've done many, many shows on that, but pretty much to sum it up, what we think of as normal comes from a guy who used to like to stick tooth brushes up his wiener and hang himself from his balls from the ceiling and then uh, started a lot of um, sex education institutes. Uh, Hugh Hefner said that he was Alfred Kinsey's pamphleteer and prophet so now you know where that came from. What else we got? Do we want to learn how to make, ooh these look good, butter caramel? The craziest conspiracy theory about stadium tours. Okay, let's do that one. Have you heard the crazy conspiracy theory that with every massive stadium tour going on right now, that there are a lot of demonic messages being unwillfully taken in by the huge crowds every night? At Beyonce's Stadium Renaissance World Tour, there's a scary interlude that takes fans by surprise that begins with a portal hypnosis as if to control you and draw you in. Then it gets scary when messages like, whoever controls the media controls the mind pop up on the screen. Then it's terrifying when mind control messages pop up on the screen in between placements of beyonce's face and a picture of a human in a submissive worshipy pose fans were saying they were getting so uncomfortable during this part they were looking away second the known suspected satanist the weekend was so shameless and blatantly for no reason flashed satan's name on the jumbotron at his stadium concert He's not even hiding his affinity for Satan at this point. It actually flashed twice. I'm making sure that you saw it. Fans and viewers often said they felt very uncomfortable at his whole run of his stadium tour because the thing just felt like one big demonic ritual that they were forced to be a part of. Before I show you the scariest one, make sure you follow so you finally know the craziest conspiracy theories about all your favorite celebrities and request who you want to see next. Lastly, there's literally a demonic chant screened by all the fans at the Taylor Swift Eras tour during her song Willow and they all yell, Summon the demons. Summon the demons, man! Summon the demons! They do this as Taylor is literally dressed as a witch with her whole coven, and there's a ceremonial huge fire in the middle of the forest. Does that remind you of anything? Or have you heard the crazy conspiracy theory that with every massive stadium tour going on right now, that there are a lot of demonic messages being unwillfully taken in by the huge crowds every night? At Beyonce's Stadium Renaissance World Tour, there's a scary interlude that takes fans by surprise that begins with a portal hypnosis, as if to control you and draw you in. Then it gets scary when messages like, whoever controls the media controls the mind pop up on the screen. Then it's terrifying when mind control messages pop up on the screen in between placements of Beyonce's face and a picture of a human in a submissive worshipy... Oh, I hate it when they start over and I can't tell. Sorry. Somebody took off work to watch this stream. Um, okay. I'm flattered. I hope it's not disappointing. We're just doing TikToks and popcorn. <clears throat> Learn how to make brownies, maybe? Or what? What is this? Shocking secrets of the food industry. How about that? Rice. There's nobody talking, it's just scary music. 
Why your betrayal sent you into shock? Okay, let's find out. This is why your betrayal trauma sent you into shock. Hi, my name is Emily. I am a subconscious reprogramming coach and a survivor of betrayal trauma. We go into shock when we feel like our lives are in danger. And shock is a protective mechanism to a nervous system that is completely overwhelmed. But why does betrayal feel like you're going to die? We may know intellectually that this betrayal will not kill us, but hardwired in our DNA is survival. Our ancestors needed human connection to survive. You were not going to make it if you weren't protected by the tribe. And as children, we are not going to make it unless we have the protection of our parents. So there's neural circuitry at work here. And when someone close to you that you think is going to protect you emotionally, physically, whatever, ends up betraying you, it elicits a primal fear. And with that primal fear comes the response, which feels like you're going to die. Luckily, we can fix this. You do not have to suffer for a year or more, please. I healed myself and I would be honored to work with you. So, yeah, the healing comes from the church. Uh, not from your pop therapist. I thought she was going to say something about memories, but what is this? Real footage of the tomb of Gilgamesh. This lady's kind of weird. She does, like, conspiracy spooky stuff. Do you want to see real fo footage of the tomb of Gilgamesh? I found footage of the no. Gilgamesh. It's not very good. Let's see. How about lemon olive oil elixir? Oh, this is really this good. This creamy lemon olive oil drink came across my For You page, and it looked too good not to try. She says that she's been making this drink for 10 years, and that it's great for swollen lymph nodes, immunity, low energy levels, and it can get things moving. And that right there is my cup of tea. She starts with one lemon, peels and all, so I made sure to wash this really well. We'll add it to the blender. Two tablespoons of olive oil. I feel like this is what's gonna make it really smooth and creamy. We'll add the second one. Two tablespoons of honey to sweeten it up. One small knob of ginger. She said this was optional, but I love ginger, so we're gonna add it. And three cups of water. And we'll blend it all together. Now that it's blended, we're gonna strain it. I'm gonna make sure I get all the liquid out of the pulp. I think I may save this for some lemon loaf protein balls. I pour a small amount into my cup. Stop it. This is so good. It's not sour whatsoever. It's refreshing. The lemon is not too strong. I could drink the whole glass of that right now. I almost forgot the cinnamon. I feel like this is going to be... This is actually really good. I drink that a lot. It's very refreshing. Helps with your body odor because I don't wear deodorant anymore. Oh, here's a girl you might want to follow on TikTok. Uh, she's real sweet. She was a born into a Luciferian family. I don't know what this one's about. Let's see. Our government runs off of Kabbalah and the Talmud. Okay, that is the outline and the basis for our government. If you look into these documents, into the doctrine that these things promote, you will understand that our government is Luciferian and promotes pedophilia. The Talmud condones child abuse and the Kabbalah is just Jewish mysticism, AKA Jewish Luciferianism. Magic is inherently sexual. It comes from the red chakra, okay? And that means that anytime you bring magic to your child, whether it be Disney or straight up Aleister Crowley, you are involving them in sex magic. You are involving your child in sex magic if you bring them magic of any kind, because it all comes from sex magic. So if you use magic, please understand I'm not condemning you, but if you use magic or you believe magic or you support magic, you support pedophilia these are things that are going to make you uncomfortable when you realize them but you need to realize it it's not a matter of opinion it's a matter of understanding doctrine and reality so a lot of you will would like to fight with me i'm sure and say hannah that's wrong no not all magic is evil not all magic is luciferian not all magic is sexual i would just say that you are a neophyte and you're unfamiliar with what you work with magic is sexual all magic 
is sexual. If you involve your child in magic, you are engaging in predatory behavior. So our government runs off. Stop. So this is somebody who I would like to see uh, platformed more. She has a lot of stories of her upbringing in Kabbalah. She's now um, converted to Christianity. Thank God. So this is someone whose conversion I do not question. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to see more of her. What else we got? Parasite cleansing. Okay, so, <laughs> so this was super big back like a year ago, year and a half ago on TikTok. We were all cleansing our parasites. I got the the parasite cleanse. I felt a lot better. Um, should we watch that one? Alrighty, this is for the people who are doing the parasite cleansing. You want to grab this drink right here. You want to get these two, one of these two drinks right here. Uh, so that is quinine. That helps break down the biofilms, which is one of the most difficult things to do. And it also makes the cells more permeable. So it's really good to take with the herbs, especially. So I got a, like a black walnut parasite cleanse. It was a double thing that you take the minerals and then you take the things that kills the little creepy crawlies in your guts. And I didn't, I didn't see anything, um, <clears throat> but I, I felt a lot better. You want to learn how to stretch and release your hips at home? No, you don't care. What else is going on? Soursop leaf. Ooh, energy conductors. <laughs> yeah, what's up with th those buildings with the crazy stuff oh we've got your ass we've got your ass now this is known as an atmospheric energy conductor also known as antiquitech many people believe that this is just a temple or a place of worship but really its true function is to gather natural energy from the ether I convert it into electricity. Oh my days. So this is why they call it a cathedral. A cathedral is a type of electrode through which electrons move. Electrons are a semiconductor, usually a metal, that is connected to something that is not metal. A cathedral delivers electrons, negative charge, and the anode collects electrons that have a positive charge. Oh my diddy. And this is another type of building that does the same thing. That's why you always find gold at the top. And the columns and arches have coals in them, conducting the current of positive and negative eons. And they're always covered in copper. Anoid is the electrode where oxidation occurs. I know this is mud flood stuff, but I love it. I don't... Why do they build the things in this way? And, like, why is there weird electrode conductor things? And why are there these giant fireplaces that no one's ever built a fire in, but they have these, like, positive and negative poles? I don't know. It's just my goofy conspiracy brain loves this stuff. Okay, well, ooh, what is this weird coin? Let's see. Okay, my friends, we need to have a quick conversation about the Abraham Accords Trump coin. You see his signature there. Um, this is extremely, extremely important that you're aware of this, okay? The, the Abraham Accords is a peace agreement. Now, the peace agreement is mentioned in scripture. There's going to be peace, peace, peace before sudden destruction comes. The people that make the peace agreement are going to be involved with bringing in the Antichrist, okay? So this is important to pay attention to, but there's a very, very, very new thing that I came across today that I need you guys to know about and your your grandmas need to know about this your moms and dads need to know about this your cousins need to know about this everyone needs to understand this I was going to go to bed and God was like no you have to tell them you need to warn them right now and I was like okay uh, so here I am Okay, this is a screenshot from another video. That is the bottom of the sword zoomed in. That's a quasi-crystal. Quasi-crystals are used in AI, and they are AI light-bearing crystals. This is high-tech 
um, AI technology. Um, it's not even really that public yet. It's, you have to really dig to find out about this stuff. The quasi crystal is in the bottom of the sword, okay? Stay with me. As you move up the sword, you see the photonic quantum computing symbol. So right there, you can see photonic quantum computing coming off of the quasi crystal into the phonic, photonic quantum computing, okay? Listen, these people that do this stuff, that run the world and do this stuff, they are prideful. They tell you what they're doing, okay? They make sure you know what they're doing. They, they put their name on it because they're prideful, okay? Very prideful. As we go up the coin, you see more symbols and stuff, but I just want to point out a few key things to you. Satellites, we know that satellites are going up right now. We have the computer language right there, but look at right beside me, you see a syringe, and then you see another thing that looks like a syringe that isn't quite a syringe. Now, we couldn't figure out what that other thing was because it doesn't look like another um, syringe. It looks like something else. Um, today, I was shown what that other thing is. Here's a closer look. Okay, syringe, and then the other thing. So I came across this today. Now, we all know that Mr. Gates was a big donator and big proponent of this thing. Well, now Mr. Gates is a big proponent of that thing, and that is the nasal pump um, jab, okay? So it's the jab in nasal pump form, right? Okay, that is the exact same shape that's on the coin. Right there, you see it? So, yeah, what is this weird coin? That has all of these symbols on it. I don't know. If you're just tuning in, if you're here from Jim Bob, we are waiting for something to happen. And in the meantime, we are watching all of my schizo saved TikToks from the past three years or however long I've been on TikTok. Most of these are boring hairstyles and recipes. I've never really been in this folder much. So we are just randomly going over what I thought was interesting from TikTok. And I do have some new donuts. We've got Jen for 10 donuts says, glad I get to catch you live. I'm donating this to fund a proper class on how to pull up videos on your computer. I feel bad for your arms unless you're trying to bulk up. In that case, use this towards some protein powder. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, I'm a boomer. At heart, I'm a, I'm a Luddite boomer. Um, my TikTok account is not synced to my laptop, so I, I don't know how, I guess I could do that, but I was too busy making a graph with crayons, so. Yeah. <laughs> what else we got? Famous people who worship Satan, part six, let's go. Famous people who worship Satan, part six, Montero Lamar Hill, otherwise known as Lil Nas X. The enemy knew exactly what he was doing with this one. Let's go. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You see, it all starts off so innocently with a song like Old Town Road, which was number one for 19 consecutive weeks. You remember the song, right? I'm probably gonna get dinged on this one. So all of a sudden, this song blows up. And Lil Nas X is now in elementary schools singing it to all the kids and they're freaking out. They worship this guy all of a sudden. And that's exactly what the enemy wants because they're going to tune into what he has next. And then what happens? This is what happened. Y'all remember this, right? The shoe with the 666 and the pentagram and the drop of human blood. The reference to Luke 1018 where Satan fell down from heaven. Yeah, that's pretty bad, right? But it actually gets worse. Because the next song released after this whole shoe debacle was called Call Me By Your Name. And this song was extremely satanic. It references the Garden of Eden and the serpents there. He ends up licking the serpent, pole dancing into hell, Hades, whatever's going on, because this is completely unbiblical because Satan's down there, which is not in the Bible, but that's a whole other discussion. But then he ends up choking giving actually gives satan a lap dance chokes his him takes the horns off of his head and then he becomes this if you watch my billy eilish video you recognize this very well this is the fallen angels it's what they do <laughs> they speak through music and they've been doing it for a very long time i remember what we discussed in the beginning who's watching all these videos who's worshiping this man now 
It's all of those children that were brought in by what seemed like an innocent song. And that's what the enemy does. He's sneaky. He tricks us. And as parents, we have to be armed and ready and understand what he's doing and how he works because he prowls around seeking to devour us. That's why I'm doing these videos. We've got to understand how he works. We need to pray for Lil Nas X, no doubt about it. We've got a lot more to cover. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, and then he went on to make that video where he was mocking Christ being a androgynous Jesus. Do y'all see that one? And he was another one like, oh, I've converted, I I've seen the light, and here's my new video, and he's, um, you know, sexy, androgynous Christ. <laughs> R.I.P. my arm. It's okay. <laughs> we're, we're doing a marathon. Is the eclipse over? Is the danger over? Are we out of the woods yet? Are we um, done with our snacks and fear? I, I haven't even gotten to the sweet popcorn yet. Let's try it. Paul says, fallen angels speak through music that is actually pretty based and thought-provoking. Yeah. What else? You want to learn how to cut your own band? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> this lady always has, like, the most coolest tips on how to cut your own hair but her hair is already like gorgeous so it's like step one have beautiful hair <laughs> sorry now we're in all hairstyles territory. Oh, here's the old fireplace I was talking about. Watch. I tried to tell you that those old fireplaces wasn't used for burning coal and wood. And you didn't believe me. But when I say I got your ass, oh, I've got your ass. So this is how the fireplace used to work. There would be a metal plate at the back of the firebox which would reflect infrared rays when the fireplace was heated up there would also be two <laughs> this is like that guy in the beginning with the little candle and in front of the tin box right same concept ether capacitators in the fireplace which provokes eddy currents in the metal frame which transmits them to the metal plate at the back eddy currents are current loops Ooh. from someone just Put a really good comment and I wanted to read it. Ash says, if you pay attention, a lot of lyrics sound like it could be Lucifer speaking to the listener exactly. A channel called Understanding Conspiracy has a vid called Lucifer is singing to you, I think. Um, yeah, and I've said this before and so it could be Lucifer singing to you or it could be you singing to him as in the case of like Rihanna Umbrella or something like that. Like that's something I always said that if you put these lyrics um, and imagine that, you know, it's you talking to Satan or him talking to you, it makes a lot more sense. Over conductor surfaces due to changing magnetic flux, they are useful in induction heating, levitating, electromagnetic damping, and electromagnetic breaking. So the fireplace and the roof are both connected by metal bondings through the chimney. The whole construction becomes one solid conductor and then the energy that's gathered from the ether gets converted into heat. In other situations, they even used radium for heating. I guess that's the reason why we still call them radiators even to this day. I mean, come on, brother. Do you really think there was burning wood and coal in these fireplaces? That's what the savages did when they came along and found these empty buildings because they didn't know how to use the technology and the size of the fireplace definitely wasn't built by us so yeah i've said this many times <laughs> fireplace guy is called the bully slayer paul wanted to know yeah and so 
they're talking about understanding conspiracy, Paul Staub's channel, understand, it's all about the Nephilim clowns. I watched that. That was pretty good. And I also, um, I agree with that and I referenced that in my book about Beyonce when she did that, um, promotion where she was like dressed up like a queen and it was all regal and she had the creepy gestures all around her. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, some of the demons do look like clowns. Asmodeus is one of them. What else? Elon Musk nanny in her- oh, this is crazy. Who knows it? Do we want to hear this? Elon Musk's nanny? Throw me some donuts in here if we're, if we're gonna roast Elon Musk and his old- Nanny. Gabriel's here. What's up, man? Thank you. It, my um, eclipse goggles. Yeah, they're they're trippy, man. We're good now, though. I think this the danger has passed. Dragon cicadas did not consume us. Where did they even come out? Y'all are supposed to be reporting in from your location all of the weird things happening. What's this? Oh, here's an old Disney, uh, one of those that we were talking about. Not propaganda, but just like training and education films it's called Family Planning. It's kind of racist, actually. The family of man is increasing at an astonishing rate, almost doubling every generation. There was almost a balance. A balance between the large number of babies born each year and the large number of people who died. The old balance is upset. Those who live now, instead of dying, are added each year to the number of people in the community. New industries are being developed to provide more goods. But whatever is done, it is not enough. Father and mother and just a few children. Now imagine that there is a house to live in and a plot of land which the father works to support them all. There is an ox to pull the plow, and the land yields a good crop. With only this many at a meal, there is enough for all, and even a little left over to provide money for some comforts and not inconveniences. The mother doesn't have to work too hard and stays healthy and happy. The children, too, are healthy and happy and go to school to gain an education. Even with modest resources, this family is doing well. But now let's paint another picture of this family and suppose that in time, more and more children are born. But let us also suppose that the house and the plot of land remain the same. Now the entire crop must be used just for food. But even so, with this many mouths to feed, there won't be enough to go around. Of course, there will be no money for modern conveniences. Even worse, the ox can no longer be fed, and the work must be done by human effort. The mother will have too much to do. She'll be tired and cross, and her health will suffer. The children will be sickly and unhappy, with little hope for the future. And when the sons grow up, the land will have to be divided into so many small pieces that no one will have enough. Modern science has given us a key that makes possible a new kind of personal freedom, family planning. If enough couples choose family planning, the balance will be restored. But this time in a better way. Thus, every couple has the opportunity to help build a better life not just for themselves, but for people everywhere. And all so yeah, uh, 
we need to control the size of our um, Latino families, according to Disney, because there's just not enough to go around. What do you think about that? Here's some more Balenciaga. Nestle crimes. Something about Jared Leto. Okay, let's click that. Oh, no sound. Okay. How about... It just says, wow. What is this? It says I mentioned to you earlier, they'll perform these rituals in public in front of lots and lots of eyes. So pay attention here. This is the Barcelona 1992 Olympic Games opening ceremony. And we'll see this ship right here. And it's actually floating on a sea of cells. Now look at what they're bringing into this sea of cells. A virus. cells mankind or a ship of fools on this sea of cells and there's the virus but wait it gets crazier Mankind ready to fight in a battle. Now take a look at this. Look at this killer cell right here. You'll get a better picture of it here in a moment, but it's made of dead humans. Now watch this. If you had any doubt that this wasn't a public ritual and that everything took place right here in 1992 is taking place right now in 2021. There's the virus. There's the hydra. There's the black hydra. The dark matter hydra that they're currently injecting into people, millions of people all around the world with that black hydra, that black goo and these hydra creatures. There's the people, all dead people. So, I recognize that voice. That's KJ from Scariest Movie Ever. Um, let's subscribe to him on TikTok. But I remember him on YouTube. He had really good shows. <clears throat> okay. NMN versus NAD. <laughs> okay. Hollywood is Babylon. How about that? What if the 1947 Babylon working actually manifested Babylon? Not the horror Babylon, but like Hollywood Babylon. If you don't know what the Babylon working is, it was a series of sex magic rituals done in 1947 in the middle of the desert by Jack Parsons, a NASA rocket guy, and Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard. Scientology has its hands in Hollywood, too. Tom Cruise, John Travolta. After the 1947 Babylon working, the 1948 Supreme Court decision, the United States versus Paramount Pictures, ended the golden age in Hollywood, shifting everything and giving control to the government over who and what and where and why and when Hollywood could work. Then, in 1948, was the Hollywood blacklist, where certain producers and directors were just cancel cultured. People that practice magic, like the ancient druids, would use bark and sticks from the holly tree to cast their spells. Hollywood? Is it a giant spell? Like a big magic wand? Movies are kind of like spell casting. A medium projected through a black box, channeling stories filled with emotions and agenda, advertising, marketing, onto a big 
black screen. Black boxes are used in magic. This is mind programming at its finest. Sit down, disassociate, watch a movie, and let us push our programming in. Like the Horror of Babylon. She'll seduce you. Is Hollywood just a magic spell called? So, yeah. Um, this is what I talk about in my live talk. And if you are just joining from Jim Bob, welcome. Uh, thank you for writing the nub wave <laughs> of our content creators. And I think the uh, danger is over. I think we're out of the woods. I did not look at the eclipse. I kept my super duper steampunk goggles on. And it's funny because like the town where I live, they're really into steampunk for some reason. So there's like at least three or four uh, steampunk gear stores here. So that's pretty funny. Um, and welcome, welcome, Logan. What's up? Logan gives $20. I can't see. The oh, yeah. It says nub wave never dies. Love it. Love wave. We love the nubs. We are doing random TikToks. We were talking about the eclipse. We were talking about Nala the ninja. And now we are just in my old TikTok folder looking at all my saved TikToks because they might take it away soon. They just voted on it and they did not, uh, they haven't banned it yet, but they're trying. So we're trying to get as many TikToks in our system as we can. Um, so these are random. They're in no particular order. They're, some are goofy. Some are serious. Some are personal <laughs> to me. Uh, there's a lot of hairstyles in here. There's a lot of recipes. Maybe we can mix it up, but we are having fun. Now we're at 2.38 chatters. Um, we've got more nubs and donuts that I know what to do with. Check our um, donuts. We're good over here. Should we continue? How about Justin Timberlake releases demonic music video? Oh, okay, so this is brand new. And our good friend Courtney Turner sent me this. Um, they were in the bookstore and they found this book that was $500. And it's called Demons of the Flesh, The Complete Guide to Left Hand Path Sex Magic. $500. Now, we're not going to spend any money on that, but I did ask her to have them take it out of the cupboard and maybe take some pictures of it. So she snapped a couple pages um, as secretly as she could. And here is one of the pages. Let me see if I can... read this. It's really gross, you guys. Hold on. It's about OTO, Cakes of Light, Tantra, Alchemy, um, Sex Magic. Of It is talking about um, Tibetan stuff. So this is why they want all the girls doing yoga and in yoga pants because they are following this um, left-hand path of Tantra. And here's an excerpt from this book. Now, this is going to be gross, so if you're a kid or if you are squeamish or if you don't want to hear this, then you can uh, mute it and go away and come back. Um, if you're new here from Jim Bob, uh, I apologize. This is your first um, introduction. But this is what we are dealing with in the Aeon of Horus. This is... Um, from the book, it says, The Palace of S-H-I-T and the Eye of Horus. So you've seen a lot of the celebrities doing the one eye, and they've linked it to the Eye of Horus. <sighs> They're talking about S-P-E-R-M and blood cakes of light that they eat in their ritual. <clears throat> the ingredients required for Crowley's private celebration of Thelemic Eucharist is even more of an acquired taste. In his magical record of the beast dating from 1920, okay, so why is this relevant to today? Because today was the day that they channeled the Book of the Law, April 8th, 1904, came through his wife Rose Kelly, and he did um, 
she dictated what the demon was telling her and he wrote it down and that became the book of the law which is the handbook for the 20th century um paganism and so what they are doing is anything that is disgusting this is also part of the uh rites of kali which they worship he says, in the magical record of the beast dating from 1920, he writes that in my mass, the host is of excrement that I consume in awe and adoration. So they're literally eating poo, okay? The pee-pee and the poo-poo. Crowley's enjoyment of SHIT, both human and animal, as a magical condiment absolutely bears comparison with the practices of the extreme left-hand past sex of India who include ritualized core what is this word coprophagia what is that somebody look that up c o p r o p h a g i a in their methodical overcoming of societal societal taboo and personal disgust in his 1929 Magic and Theory and Practice, Crowley gives advice to the aspirant magician that would be familiar to the left-hand path Adam. Now, this goes to our old Marina Abramowicz, right? When she's doing art with the blood and the pee and the breast milk and the poo. Um, he says he recommends training the mind and body to confront things which cause fear, pain, disgust, and shame and the like. He must learn to endure them, then to become indifferent to them, then to analyze them until they give pleasure and instruction and finally appreciate them for their own sake as aspects of truth. When this has been done, Crowley sensibly suggests he should abandon them if they are really harmful in relation to health or comfort. As is so often the case, the beast offered others sage counsel he himself often ignored to his peril. So he's literally a SHIT eater. Uh, like I said, people in the cult of Kali roll around in dead animals and eat dirt and don't bathe and just anything, um, disgusting is going to help you in this left-hand path. So, with that in mind, let's watch this Justin Timberlake brand new video, old Papa Timberlake. Remember, he came out getting roasted a couple months ago because he looks like a dad dancing he's not cool or relevant anymore so he had to go to the satanic route this is the most satanic music video i have ever seen i don't know what justine timberlake is up to but this is dark and i hope this is not being filmed inside of a church because once he enters this building we find out that this is some secret party and he is quickly greeted with his alter ego as he watches over him we are then greeted with the devil herself who invites him to come dance he then starts to raise her up but then it gets dark very quickly she scratches his face which represents the possession and everyone on the dance floor turns into demons him and his alter ego then make eye contact with each other like what have you just done and then the devil arises she spreads her wings looks at him right in the face and all the other demons worship her. she then drops this black liquid from her mouth onto him and then this is where things just get wild everyone then gets this red liquid on them they start doing stuff with each other and honestly it's just extremely creepy at the end of the party his alter ego buries his old self in the trunk he then gets in the car with the devil her eyes are possessed they turn to him and then his eyes become possessed this is the most satanic so that's pretty gross and that black goo vomit she's putting right in his mouth that totally reminded me of crowley So we are still doing random TikToks. I'm enjoying the chat. You guys are cracking me up over here. Do we want to learn how declassified CIA files, how dimensions work according to the CIA? Yes or no? I will give $10,000 to anybody that can prove me wrong here. Uh, I promise you won't. So I'm reading through old CIA files. Uh, here's a good starter is just the CIA basically, in their words, not mine, showing that a brainwave can turn into a particle just like a radio wave turns into a photon. 
Uh, it turns out this explains the whole universe uh, far beyond most people's comprehension. I'm going to explain it in my best layman's terms. Stick around for maybe two minutes and this will make way too much sense. So to start, I was reading a declassified document on warp drives. That's weird. Basically, bending space in one way and at a higher point in another causes space and time to move around you. Uh, those don't seem really interlinked yet until you start understanding that space and time is its own dimension. And you look at some of their summaries of this, and this was written in the 80s. It was a concept, but it's talking about the Large Hadron Collider, like what CERN does. Ooh. Uh, I'm just... Has anyone checked up on CERN lately? What happened when they collided those particles? A lot of people were saying there was a ghost that came out. I mean, I've seen so many articles on CERN people saying that their collider is haunted. Like, there's a specter in there. It's weird. Forget all that. It's just interesting to think about. Now we go to a file like this, where they're studying research and human paranormal abilities. So think about the gateway process. I did a video on this. I did two videos on these concepts. Watch them first. They're pinned. Or just watch this one. I'll do my best to explain it. But this is basically the fourth dimension. This is a tesseract in 4D. Uh, think about Interstellar at the end when he goes in the black hole and he's manipulating the past. How is that scientifically sound? It wasn't until now. Now here's another one of those that would make more sense to us. Picture this is your future, say it's a kitchen, this is your present, your bathroom, and this is your living room, which is the past, like your house. But they're all moving by default of nature and intersecting at different points. So when he enters the black hole and goes into Murphy's room, he's not in the third dimension anymore, he's in the fourth. The they're hypercubes. I can't do Matthew McConaughey, I need Jay here. Hypercubes in space. Before he can manipulate the past backed by science so how does this explain the universe and human paranormal abilities so when you map out something like the flower of life which i have a video on also pinned watch it or don't you get something like a torus which also explains electromagnetic fields uh, this was not proven until we discovered that the platypus can detect who is what with its beak because of these fields. It goes underwater, its eyes and ears shut down, it's blind and deaf, yet it can pick up electromagnetic fields from your brain waves enough to know friend from food. And again, these brain waves turn into particles. We're starting to kind of get somewhere here with how does all this work? There's five dimensions. Now here is a good example of all of these, but it's 2D. It's, you know, we can't really map that out. We can't perceive it. But picture line, dimension one, square dimension two. That would be where we live. You can go up, down, left, right, forwards and backwards. It's 3D. Then you have the 4D, which was the tesseract I just showed earlier, uh, Murphy's room. And then a five-dimensional cube, which turns into a light hologram. What the fuck is a light hologram? First, just understand how dimensions work. If you had a, an anthill, a, a pet anthill, in a 2D space. It could never know you exist because it can't perceive you. So you dump a bucket of water on it and it's like their whole world flooded as an act of God. It's interesting to think about, but just follow it here. Us living in the 3D could never perceive this or this, but we have proof that this exists because we have space and time and ways to manipulate it. So now we look back to these CIA files and they show even in the 19th century that Physicists knew that the 3D was not enough to prove the fundamentals of life, of nature. And they go on to say that it's more so our consciousness projecting thoughts out that affects our reality. How does that work and why does this make sense? They're actually all very interconnected. And again, really weird that the oldest history we have, people knew this, but this is that flower of life I'm talking about overlaid on a quantum carpet, which is used to measure density and spaces between particles. So these guys knew something we didn't, and they figured it all out with circles. Uh, the government knows it, and most of us don't. And frankly, it's pretty damn confusing until someone explains it out. But if you stick around, this will make too much sense. So picture something like this being the universe we live in projecting light inwards. Our consciousness would be a part of that because we're creating particles with our thoughts. Whether we can see them or not, 
kind of goes over the science of manifesting, also heavily seen in the gateway files. Uh, it's weird. It is super weird, but it concretely proves that we live in a five-dimensional reality and by f physics and getting as far down as the quantum level, it's, it's a hologram of light. And again, the platypus proves this. It, so do these gateway files and even our ancient history. We live in a hologram of light. I'm not saying this. I, I mean, I kind of am, but I'm just reading off these files. We live in a hologram of light and we produce electromagnetic impulses through our brain, through our heart that can directly input on our reality. So now you think about stuff like fear mongering, little out there, but follow me. If we're all focused on something bad, something bad is going to happen. Ooh, like the eclipse. You look, right. look at stuff like an eclipse or the fucking war on drugs. I mean, all, all these different things and it, it creates fear. It creates hate. Okay. Follow me. If everybody loved more, it would directly change this because as a collective, we have more power than as a singular being. I mean, I know tons of people who would talk about manifesting. In fact, all of my rich friends swear by it. I'm starting to myself because I see results. It's not one of those things that makes sense until you start looking at the science. But it's weird. Just, just really like think on this for a minute. Follow dimensions upwards, and it's irrefutable. Ten grand. Prove me wrong. You won't. Also, if you made it this far in the video, you're not here because you think you can win 10 grand. You're here. So this is like hermetic, tiny, whiny, uh, manifesty. I'm not saying there's nothing to it, but this is how they are going to use these things to get you into a cult, into manifesting, into meditating, um, the gateway process. Um, Kotel's done some shows and Jay's done some shows about that, the, the gateway process. Oh, did you guys hear about the mothership? It may sound straight out of a movie, but the Pentagon and a Harvard scientist have collaborated on a new draft report questioning if we're alone in the universe and whether we've already seen evidence of life beyond Earth. Here's Gotti Schwartz. Move over, Chinese spy balloon, or whatever else U.S. fighter jets shot down last month. Tonight, out of Harvard University, a draft paper about mysterious flying objects sounding almost like science fiction. There's a new thing. I think it's very likely that we are not the most intelligent civilization that ever existed. Renowned Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb, teaming up with the new head of the Pentagon's UFO office, dubbed the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. Together, they say that interstellar objects detected in space could be signs of extraterrestrial life and that current sky mapping technology like the James... It may sound straight out of... So, yeah, um, it's just funny to me how... They keep on rolling out the, the alien stuff and nobody really cares. Like, we can't afford groceries. You think we're going to care about the mothership? Like, it could be, you know, not that I'm saying aliens are invading, but something could be happening and people just do not give a crap because they can't even, like, support themselves. And there's too much happening in the real world for this woo-woo stuff to be of any interest to anybody anymore. What else we got? Ooh, you want to see an elephant make a painting?
very smart. How does he do that? That's so cute. Okay, what else we got? We're we're going on two hours and 40 minutes. Y'all are still rocking with me. That's cool. I like it. We are doing random TikToks, waiting for something to happen, but the eclipse ellipse a clip a clop ellipse big nothing burger I s we still got three days to go in the whole uh ritual though the um days of the beast april 8 9 and 10 so something could still happen in the next few days what's this verizon will host the third annual moloch conference what in the heck <laughs> They're not going to talk. Okay, so the Moloch conference. What is this? Of course, Moloch is the bull that uh, of human sacrifice. What's Moloch? It's a large-scale open-source index packet capture and search system. Verizon Media and other companies to help store the index network traffic for analysis. So, nerd stuff, but why do they name it Moloch? This is Moloch. An ancient Babylonian lesser god that the people of that time would sacrifice their children to to gain favor from this god. Verizon Media will host the third annual Moloch conference. Unfortunately, I can't find any other information because it's all been removed as far as I can tell. You have to ask yourself why would anybody associate any type of thing, especially a conference? associating themselves with this god and the practices of the babylonians of that time well to answer that question you have to understand the rulers of this world the very wealthy ones that you don't see and don't hear about are sick in the head they participate in occultic practices rituals human trafficking human sacrificing especially of young children the eating of human flesh. And most people are absolutely oblivious to this and, or don't care at all. As long as they got carnival and technology to keep them preoccupied. Wake up, people. Come out of her. All glory to Christ. This is Moloch. Yeah, Moloch is a bull, not an owl. Sorry, guys always been the owl is the goddess and moloch is a bull how about what should we watch the best coincidence ever that looks good what's a coincidence that you think about a lot the best coincidence that has ever happened in history happened in 1950 at the west side baptist church beatrice nebraska if you've never heard about it you don't know what you're missing Every Wednesday, a 15-person choir would meet at 7.15 p.m., have some late conversation, and promptly start practice at 7.20. On this Wednesday in particular, March 1st, 1950, it was a rather chilly day. Reverend Klempel would stop by the church and fire up the furnace before heading home for dinner. At the time he was to head back to practice, his daughter noticed a large food stain on her dress. His wife would have to iron another dress, making them uncharacteristically late for practice. Choir member Herbert Kipf also lost track of time while penning a letter. Choir member Harvey All was trying to get his two boys ready. His wife was out of town, and he was not as good at wrangling his boys as was she, making him late. Ladona Wagner Griff was trying to finish her homework and having some difficulty with her geometry. Royina Estes and her sister Sadie were having some car problems and asked the struggling mathematician Ladona if she would pick them up. Pianist Marilyn Paul had fallen asleep after dinner, and her mother, the choir director, was having trouble rousing her from her slumber, making them a bit late. High schooler Lucille Jones was absorbed in a radio program, thus making her and her neighbor, Dorothy Wood, run a little bit behind schedule. Mrs. Leonard Schuster and her daughter had to stop by her mother's house before practice, and mom could be a bit chatty. Member Joyce Black had no excuse for her tardiness. She said she was just feeling plain lazy and didn't want to head out into the cold. Practice was scheduled for 7.20. At 7.27, the church would erupt into a ball of flames fueled by a broken gas pipe. No one inside would survive the blast. But there was no one inside. Each of 15 choir members and two small children, uncharacteristically late for various and sundry reasons. Divine intervention or the greatest coincidence in history? 
You decide. What's a coincidence? So, that's pretty crazy. God protected all of those choir members from a exploding church just by being late for a couple minutes. That's divine providence right there, isn't it? How about... Have y'all heard of Barbara O'Neill? She's like a health lady. Um... She's pretty good. Look her up on TikTok. How about scientist proves prayer works? Let me hear that. Dr. Rebecca Morena. She studied her own red blood cells. They studied and photographed her blood cells under different physical and emotional state. And this is what they found. This is crazy. Uh, when she was sad, her blood cells moved quickly and they became, seriously, they became tear shaped. What? When she was sad. What? Blood cells were in the shape of perfect tear. Uh, when her emotions reflected great love, the shape and formation and the speed became normal. And no joke, they, they became, the, her blood cells began to, like, sparkle. What? Like, 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 with these little flints of light that weren't present before. These little, little, little glints of light. When she was anxious, her blood cells clumped together and they started moving all quickly. Tension. Yes. Yeah. Tension. Yeah. Which was identical to when they um, studied her blood cells when she was sick. Wow. This is the last um, experiment that they did, which is the m most mind blowing. It gets weirder. Yes. They were like shook by these results already. They're like, wow, this is crazy. It's time to bring in our colleagues to, to look at this. They grouped um, her blood cells into like four or five different groups. The colleagues came in and they picked, um, I believe, two of the groups of blood cells and the colleagues prayed over the blood cells. Wow. They, they, they prayed extensively for like an hour over these blood cells. Everyone there was stunned because the blood fluid that was prayed over not only shined. What? Like bright, not just the little glints of light from before, but like it was like glowing. But but hold on, but we are talking about at a level that's so far beneath the detection of the human eye, right? Oh, I'm talking about like microscope. It's a dark field. Okay, okay. It's called a dark field microscope. It, it completely blacks out everything behind it so that you can see things like this light and things like that. <laughs> this is insane. The the blood cells separate from her body that were being prayed over, the light and the motion were pulsating at the same rate of her resting heart rate. What? Her blood cells. Her blood cells on a plate, separate from her body, have been separated for hours. They're entangled. They are. They are. They're still connected. Wow. Um, and the cells that were not prayed over weren't even moving. Dr. Rebecca So Marina. this this reminds me of those experiments that they did on water, the um, Emoto waters. If you pray over, like, water in a cup and then you get another cup of water and you say, I hate you or whatever, and then they look at it under a microscope and the structure of the water is different depending on... Uh, your intention or your emotion that you put into it. So that was a really fascinating um, study they did. If you want to look, I think it's called just like um, Emoto's Water, Life life and Water or something like that. But yeah. So proof that prayer and intention has a physical effect on your body. And if your thoughts can do that to water, then they can do that to another person because we have so much water in our system. What else we got? There is an invisible and mysterious line between two islands in Indonesia, which no fish, bird, or animal can cross. This line, known as the Wallace Line, starts between Bali and Lombok Islands and extends to the end of the male islands. Despite being invisible on sonar, the fauna on the western side of this line drastically differs from those on the eastern side. Remarkably, the distance between these two islands is merely 35 kilometers. 
Traveling from Bali to Lombok, one witnesses a dramatic shift in the environment. The species of birds and animals prevalent in Bali do not cross this boundary to Lombok, and vice versa. This segregation extends to the marine life beneath the waves, where the fish also adhere to this unseen barrier. These two neighboring islands, separated by a slender strip of ocean, present as two distinct ecological realms, divided by a force enigmatic yet palpable. The Wallace Line stands as a testament to the complex and fascinating patterns of biological diversity and evolution, creating a natural demarcation that- Yeah, I don't think that has to do with the evolution, but I think that's really fascinating. And funny, I've actually been to Bali and Lombok. I did not know that they had entirely different fish and fauna and all types of stuff. Somebody just said, Jamie, where did it go? Jamie, it's time to talk Aleister Crowley and him writing Book of the Law today. Okay, yeah, I mentioned that a bunch of times. So, uh, the year 1904, I think, and Aleister Crowley is on his honeymoon in Egypt, and they go to the Egyptian Museum, and they find this Stella, and he called it the Stella of Revealing because it was some kind of, oh, why did he call it that? I'll have to look at my notes again. Anyway, so they find this special Stella and it has the mark of the beast on it, the O and the X. And they get back to the hotel and his wife, Rose Kelly, is feeling weird and she's like saying weird things. And he's like, she doesn't know magic. How does she know all of these Egyptian gods and goddesses and like magic stuff? So he just kind of like starts writing down things that she's saying. She goes into a trance and she starts talking. Um, and he is writing down what she's saying, and this becomes the Book of the Law, or the Liberal, Liberal Religious, Valigious. And this is pretty much the Bible of the 21st century. And so the motto from that book was, do without will shall be the whole of the law. You've got things that grow out of that, the OTO, which we talk about all the time. So many celebrities are in the OTO. Jay-Z is one of them. He's been seen with his gear that says do without will. Um, Rachel just sent me this picture a couple days ago and asked me, uh, she says, is there any symbolism here worth noting or is it just gross and weird and for the purpose, oh, all that happened on April 8th, by the way. April 8th, 9 and 10 is when he is um, transcribing what Rose is saying in a trance by a demon. So Rachel says, is there symbolism here with, um, who is this? Is this? I don't know. Oh, Cardi B. Okay. So here's Cardi B. Recent Instagram. Cardi B. And you see she's got dove pasties on her boobies. She's got doves holding up her veil or whatever she's wearing she's got a dove on her head okay so i told rachel i'd say go look into the white dove of the oto this is the oto sigil you've got the eye of horus you've got the white dove which symbolizes the goddess and you've got that cup with what they call the starfire in it or what we were just reading about excrement blood menstrual blood um, semen, um, poo, whatever bodily fluids that these freaking people use. But yeah, so the white dove is definitely part of this ritual magic. And, uh, Beyonce's video that I talk about where the white dove appears and makes her levitate off the bed. It's called Sweet Dreams. So this is part of the sex magic. And also the dove... In Latin is called Colum, or the col Colum, and where we, sorry, I have a hair in my mouth, where we get the word Columbia or the District of Columbia. Did you know Columbia was a goddess, the personification of Columbia? Here's a picture of her right here. The goddess of America, and we are going to cover that um, when I do secret architecture of Washington DC so she has been used since the 1730s to refer to the 13 colonies that would form to the United States her appearance um, she's usually depicted unaccompanied and as a goddess like human she's portrayed with auburn brown and sometimes black hair 
but she is usually wearing that Phrygian cap. So I bet you didn't know that Washington DC District of Columbia was named after the goddess Columbia and the Latin word for dove is column. So did that uh, satisfy your um, little lesson on April 8th and Crowley and the Book of the Law? Let's go back to TikTok. We're going on two hours. Maybe let's go just a couple more talks because my arms are getting tired, but I love how you all are hanging in there. You're having fun in the chat. We are eating popcorn. I'm kind of sick of popcorn right now, actually. But um, we've got our donuts. Let's check our donut patch. Good over there. And we just found out that the there is a invisible line between Bali, Indonesia, and Lombok that has totally different fish um, and uh, fauna, flora and fauna. It's called the Wallace line. There's also a weird line between the Atlantic There's and an the Pacific line. where the waters, one is like saltier than the other and they don't mix. That's like super creepy. Okay. What else we got? Who's this guy? This is, um, I don't know what he's going to say. The worst people in this world, in my experience, I've seen this over and over again, and I know you know these names. The worst people in the world are friends with everyone. I don't want to be friends with the guy who's friends with everyone. They're a snake. They will wear whatever mask that they need to in whatever room they're in. They will blend in like a chameleon. And that is the worst kind of human being. They have no spine. They have no soul. The friend to all is a friend to none. So beware of that person in your life where they're friends with everybody playing both sides. That's the worst person in the world. <laughs> I, I tend to agree with that. I mean, you, you have to take sides sometimes because there is such a thing as right and wrong. And somebody who's going to always just like waver on the precipice of I don't want to get involved or I don't want to make any decisions or hurt anybody's feelings. It's just like you got to pick a side, man. Otherwise, you're just on your own side. Okay. Oh, this is cute. Watch this. <laughs> I would love to like roll up beside an otter in a car that would be so cute what is this oh this is hilarious watch I like baked beans cold from the tin. So do I. I genuinely, people think this is ridiculous. I, I love baked beans cold from the tin. So do I. Um, perfect. With a fork or spoon? Spoon. Spoon. I prefer a fork. So we can skewer the last ones. Yes, but what about the, 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 the tomato sauce? Oh, you're right. <laughs> I like baked beans cold from the tin. I mean, this just cracked me up because I love British people. I have, like... A non lusty crush on every British person. I just love them so much. And what is funny about their way of being is like they're so. How do you say this? Like a British person will be in love with someone they see every day for 50 years and never tell them until like the end of their life. Like, I've always loved you, right? <laughs> they just, they don't go for it for some reason. But um, I just thought this was hilarious, them like flirting over baked beans. That was the most British thing I've ever seen. Ooh, here's um, Madonna in concert. This is creepy. <laughs> to make war 
So, yeah, nothing weird going on. Just quoting Revelations 13 in concert with uh, giant flames and people and hooded robes. Here's another one. Madonna in Dallas. So yeah, the, that's what's going on at Madonna. Just, just Scarlet Woman things. <laughs> oh, have you heard? Um, Beyonce is under suspicion now because one of her country songs talks about killing someone and uh, all these TikTok sleuths have put together that it might have been a mistress of Jay-Z and then maybe Blue Ivy is not their daughter because that was the time where she had that bump that um, deflated when she sat down. So, <laughs> stuff's getting weird, part infinity. Here's something funny. So this is just a uh, something that somebody caught on the street in Boston and isn't that every couple's fight nowadays because of things like OF and Instagram and all of that like liking those pictures is pretty disrespectful if you are in a relationship because why are you liking them? Everybody knows why you're liking them because you want to get that person's attention, right? There's even a, a Saturday Night Live skit called Why'd You Like It? And at the end of every joke, they have to admit, uh, I liked the picture because I wanted to hook up with that person. Here's Beyonce. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. I am at loss of words right now. Okay. All right. Let's start from the beginning. Do you remember when this happened to Beyonce? When she went on the TV show and, like, the fake stomach collapsed? I mean, we can say allegedly the fake stomach, but, I mean, here it is. It looks like one of those fake tummies people have when they, um, want to look pregnant. But now listen to this. I was just listening to news about Diddy and what's going on with him and they're like reeling in Jay-Z and all of this and Beyonce and all this other debacle and stuff. And this is what I noticed. Kathy White was Jay-Z's ex-girlfriend, former mistress. She's also known as Corey. And she was Jay-Z's mistress until the year Beyonce had the baby Blue Ivy. Coincidentally, this Corey girl, the mistress, died under mysterious circumstances. She had just given an interview talking about Jay-Z and her relationship, which was supposed to be all hush-hush. In fact, every time Jay-Z would go out with her, he'd always ask her to bring friends along so it wouldn't look like they were together alone. And the last time that they were publicly seen together, Jay-Z was with Diddy and they were in Las Vegas at the Floyd Mayweather boxing match. And they were seen with Corey, the mistress, and this other lady, Claudia Jordan. And there is Beyonce's song where she's talking about you're laying on the floor in blood, ruining my carpet and my couture. And I'm like, what? So this girl that passed away mysteriously, the thing is this, she was pregnant with Jay-Z's baby. So now she passed away. Beyonce goes on the interview and this happens and then all of a sudden Beyonce and Jay-Z have a baby 
this is their child, and this is the girl that passed away. I'm not even going to say it. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. So... I'm telling you, she's probably the weirdest pop star that ever lived if you get into it. And I, I did a Beyonce stream in December when her concert was in the theaters. I went to the theater all by myself and I sat through all three hours of it and we did a whole stream about it. But when I was writing um, my third book, I have a whole chapter about Beyonce in it and I have 19 pages of notes that didn't even make it into the chapter because it was so much crazy stuff. So let's um, pick a couple more. What's this armadillo? That's so cute. We found a baby armadillo a couple weeks ago. Um, he, he was just like this big and his mom wasn't around and he was shivering. I don't think he was going to make it. So I picked him up and I like warmed him up and we did all of this like hunting and we found like a armadillo rehabber because I don't I don't know how to feed an armadillo I don't I've done baby birds but I never did armadillos um <clears throat> but we took him to her and the first thing she did was like take him out of the box and put him up to her face and start kissing on him so I, I thought he was in good hands there she knew what to do What's this White House thing? March 31st in 2024 is widely known as Easter Sunday this year. Oh, we all know that. They declared that the trans uh, visibility day. Here's the little armadillo. But the one I found was a baby. He was so cute. Let's do a couple more and then we will call it a day because I think we're all going to make it. I think the danger is over. Let's see, what do we want to hear about? Sneakers suggestions? No, you don't care. Usher? Meh. J-Lo? <laughs> She's a joke now. Oh no, what is... What's this? Archetypes are thought by some to be patterns of energy that play themselves out over and over. And there are some who believe that archetypical energy patterns are stored within the Earth's magnetic field. How could they be stored? Perhaps they get stored within the atmosphere the same way that other types of energy waves get stored in the atmosphere. Here is an example. During the Vietnam War in the 1960s, an American ship out on the ocean began to pick up a very strange radio transmission. Suddenly, sailors on the ship began to hear both Japanese and American fighter pilots from World War II, from like over 20 years earlier on the radio. Those broadcasts were electromagnetic waves and they had been floating around out over the ocean in that area for decades. And due to some kind of condition on that particular day, the radio waves were refracted back down into the atmosphere and were picked up by the ship's radio, even though it was decades later. Perhaps archetypical energy patterns are stored in So, yeah, this is more of that bully slayer stuff. Interesting. What happened to Princess Kate, man? Oh, this is weird. Kim Kardashian Skims commercial?
lots of weird imagery and it, she's in like one of the what are those call it centrifuge like why is she in a centrifuge this is straight up looking like mk ultra welcome clint welcome chase we're about done glad you could make it just kidding i like you guys what would you like to see we are looking at all my old tiktoks um oh this is weird oh i have to okay so it says mark twain's passion for collecting young girls who he nicknamed angelfish for his aquarium club so can we put mark twain in our um creeper files probably uh who else is in there lewis carroll uh p diddy <laughs> All these guys. So Mark Twain collected young girls who he nicknamed Angelfish for his aquarium club. Beginning in 1908, he established the Aquarium Club, a members-only organization consisting of himself and 13 girls below the age of 16. He called them his Angelfish. Twain was 72 years old. Twain defended his predilection by insisting that he longed for grandchildren. He had recently suffered the loss of his wife and daughters. He even required members to wear angelfish pins. Twain's secretary, Isabel Lyon, often chaperoned and arranged visits between Twain and the young women. Why, though? I mean, if this is innocent, why do they have to be below a certain age and why do they have to be all girls? If it was all boys that he was, you know, mentoring, that would be different. One trip to Bermuda with Twain in 1908, Twain, Lion recorded in her journal, he has his aquarium of little girls, and they are all angelfish. Off he goes with a flash when he sees a new pair of slim little legs appear. If the little girl wears butterfly bows of ribbon on the back of her head, then his delirium is complete. What? Twain drafted a constitution for the aquarium club, which required the girls to wear their badge and their head ribbons and noted that none above school age is permitted in the club. Twain referred to himself as the admiral and required the girls to write to him once every three months at the very minimum. If the girls didn't write often enough, Twain demoted them from active members to honorary members with reproaches. When Twain moved into his Connecticut home in 1908, he built a special room in the house for visits with the girls. He also chose to call the house Innocence at Home because he hoped to host many young girls. Most of the girls were from prominent wealthy families. To the parents, it was an honor that Twain took such an interest in their children. Twain's daughter Clara disapproved of the club. She objected to her father's letters from teenage girls his involvement and interest in the club dipped in the final years before his death in 1910. His surviving letters indicate a change in tone as he complained the girls were growing up too fast and he was not particularly keen on hearing about their boyfriends. What? So, Jamie ruins anything and everything. I just ruined Mark Twain for you all. Sorry. Okay, what is this? Well, since Clint just got here and since Chase just got here, we can't stop now. Even though my arm's getting tired, lots of people have said goodnight. Ew, what is this? HR, H522, prohibiting the serving of human flesh to unknowing recipient. What is this? Oh, you don't play it. It's just a picture. Okay, so it's... There was a Republican Heather Scott presents H522 prohibiting the serving of human flesh to unknowing recipients. So why is this going on the law books? Have we been eating people without knowing? Remember that Willy Wonka thing we talked about the other day? That was so funny. I still can't laughing. Up. It's the unknown. Here's a video on that. With no sound. In Scotland, especially on the mastermind. 
and behind it, and it is way crazier than you thought. I'm sure you've all seen the story by now. People paid $45 for an immersive Willy Wonka's experience, and when they got there, it was just an empty warehouse and a handful of props and the world's saddest Oompa Loompa. Kids were literally crying, and parents got so mad they actually called the cops on the place. It was put on by this company called House of Illuminati, which is really just one guy named Billy Cole, and he is something. He used chat GPT to generate everything, which appears to be his MO because he wrote and published 17 novels on Amazon in one year and they are all AI generated. He calls himself an enigmatic wordsmith and a rising star in the literary world, a blurb which was also written by AI, presumably. The night before they opened, he gave the actors a giant 15-page script that was written by a machine and told them to learn it, but none of it made sense with any of the props and sets they had. Like the Twilight Tunnel, this is what the guests were expecting and what the actors were anticipating in interacting with and it was meant to be this portal filled with twinkling lights that was going to transport you to the chocolate dimension but instead it was just these black curtains on either side with these checkerboard posters on it and mirrors like what what is that supposed to be? Here's some of the lines from it. There is a man who lives here. His name is not known. So we call him the unknown. I the just unknown I think that's e so funny. Like the AI going through the internet trying to find out what scares people and it's probably um, coming up with the phrase fear of the unknown, fear of the unknown. So he writes this character, the unknown, and the way that the, the Wonka uh, actor character is introducing it to the kids is hilarious. He's like, it's the unknown. And all the kids are like, no. Little chocolate maker who lives in the walls. Yeah, look at that guy with the silver mask. That is the unknown. That is nightmare fuel. Parents paid $45 for this image to be burned in their children's brains for the rest of their lives. And this is the guy who played Willy Wonka. Sorry, just Willy. They weren't allowed to use the name Wonka. Uh, he's certainly an interesting casting choice from the Timothy Chalamet and Johnny Depp images that we're used to. At one point in the script, Willy was supposed to suck up the unknown with a giant vacuum cleaner, but they didn't have anything like that. So they were told by Billy Cole to just improvise. Improvise what? You gotta give us some guidance and some props to make it work. So instead, after like the first group of guests went through, the actors threw the whole script out and just started interacting with the people like, hello kids, I'm Willy Wonka, let's look at this thing over here, I guess. And the sad Oompa Loompa, her name is Kirsty Patterson. And she says they were supposed to have this jelly bean room full of jelly beans, but they only had a handful of jelly beans. They had to ration them. She was giving out three jelly beans per kid. Look, 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 there she is counting them. <laughs> I'm so sad. I feel so bad for all of the actors in this. The actors did the- uh, That still cracks me up. I can't get over that. The Wonka experience. Oh, did you all hear about glitter? The dark truth about glitter. This is why you should never you should never buy glitter again. So the main glitter manufacturer company is called Glitterax. And an investigative journalist went from the New York Times to do an article about it. And there were a lot of like top secret spots in the factory that they couldn't go to. There's a worldwide shortage of glitter. So Chris went to ask like one of the higher ups, like what's going on? Why is there a shortage? Like what's happening? He asked for a real tour of the factory. And the guy said, absolutely not. You cannot come on a real tour. We don't do real tours. And he said that you absolutely cannot see the glitter being made. He even said that you can't go to a room nearby and hear how it's being made. He said that even like the companies that are their main clientele don't have access to these rooms and are not allowed to know exactly how the glitter is being made. But like, it's really suspicious that no one is even allowed to hear it being made. Now the company that is the largest consumer for glitter was asked what it is. And she said, I can't even tell you. And someone asked, they said, if we looked at the product that you use to make glitter, would we know that it turns into glitter? And she said, no, not really. She said, they don't want anyone to know that it is glitter. Do you believe all of this? Let me know and follow my TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube for more. It really helps when you interact. What they found out about glitter, glitter, glitter gate, this was like maybe a year ago. Uh, is that the government is the number one purchaser of all of the glitter because they were going, they were having a glitter shortage, and they're like, "Where's all the glitter going?" 
Um, and they were like, we can't tell you, but then they figured out it was the military and they were spraying it in the sky for radar purposes. So why is there all this glitter in the sky? What else do we got? Does anyone else love these little like kitty and doggy uh, stories? No, not that one. What is this? It turns out billionaires, politicians, and economists really have just been gaslighting us for the last three years. Yesterday, an explosive economics report was released by a think tank out of D.C. confirming what you and I and everyday Americans have been screaming from the rooftops for the past three years. That these record high price increases that we've experienced in everything from gasoline, lumber, poultry, eggs, and diapers haven't actually been being driven up by necessities, supply chain issues, COVID recovery, or labor shortages. No, no. It turns out that 53% of all price increases that have quite literally bankrupted middle America have now in fact been confirmed to have been driven by one singular thing. Billionaire corporate greed and their record and relentless pursuit of profits. It's as vulgar as it sounds and I'm sorry to say the outlook doesn't look good but let's get into this and talk about how we can still fight back and protect our households, our income, and our economy. Let's get into it. Since the start of 2020, the working and middle class of America have experienced the largest strip mining and transfer of wealth from the everyday American to billionaires that has ever been experienced in our nation's history. We've experienced relentless increases on prices on everything from diapers going up 184% to 70% increases in the prices of chicken and poultry and eggs. And despite ever-increasing record profits continuing to be reported as everyday Americans continue to deplete their savings just trying to survive, 67% of Wall Street and political insider economists that have been giving testimony before Congress and quoting for the record in the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg have consistently stated over and over again, no, 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 price increases haven't been driven by corporate greed. It's a nuanced issue related to supply chain and labor demands and, and squeeze in the economy. Why? Why have they been saying that? Well, their jobs depend on it. As a result, it's become a widely adopted narrative that companies and consumers have been sharing in the So this one's kinda long. Somebody yawned, so we'll move on. But yeah, there is no reason that the prices are going up other than they are doing it on purpose to squeeze out the middle class. Hmm. Ooh, this looks good. If you've just joined us, we are going on three and a half hours. Uh, we are doing TikToks and popcorn, but I'm sick of popcorn. And we talked about the beaver moon and Nala and all the random TikToks that I ever saved since the beginning of my talk days about two years ago. And we're just having fun. What is this, Grandma playing the washboard? <laughs> awesome Grandma playing Bone Thugs and Harmony on her washboard. Okay, what do we got? Professor of Religious Studies explains how NASA SpaceX launches our rituals. He was part of space program. He's really integral into the space program. And he launches, you know, these rockets and works with SpaceX and that type of thing. And what I found out, which he actually did not know, and I pointed it out to him, was that the whole thing was a ritual. The whole thing got was ritualized. So they identified certain time periods astronomically when it would be beneficial to launch and they also had the rockets had um roman gods on them and they also had um latin first century latin not medieval latin it wasn't catholic latin it was basically imperialistic latin and so and 
everybody had to stay in their own space. Like there was a place where they had to stay. They wore the same clothes for every mission. Um, and they ate the same food. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Are you referring to a SpaceX launch? I, I missed that. Yeah, yeah. We're, well, not all SpaceX launches, just certain of them with Tyler involved. And so when he would be involved launching these satellites into space, a lot of times they'd be with SpaceX because that's who they used. Um, I that see. Was, yeah. So they would they would go, you know, they've been doing this from, it looks like from the 1950s onward, they've been doing this ritual. And they would even have like a chaplain there. And, you know, they would, it was very, very, listen, it was very ritualized. And so I noticed that and I asked him about it and I said, do you know that this is first century Latin that's written on these rockets? And he said, no, I didn't know that. He didn't even know it was Latin. And so we read them. We, I translate them all. And I said, this, wow, this says that. And I said, who up there in space is going to be reading this? Like, why would you put that on there? You know, that seems so strange. And he said, well, I imagine it's for them. And I said, <laughs> okay, who's, who are they? You know? And so he did, he just didn't say anything. So the two questions that occurred is firstly, what did it say? And then also, does this mean that Elon Musk himself is putting those messages there? Like Elon is a believer in ETs and, and so on, or is it just one of the staff members? No, no, he, this is beyond, this is way before Elon. So it has nothing to do with him. Um, his company is just the company that puts those, does the launches to get the satellites up. But he has nothing to do with creating the satellites or of putting the um, Roman stuff on them. Nothing at all to do with that. That that was definitely predates him. Um, so what does it mean, though? Um, yeah, what I mean, was written on it? Yeah, so to me, it looks like what I what people have t- called like exotheology or astrotheology. It's this this kind of well i call it it's not a specific religion but it's a religiosity of people who are involved in the space program and it's this um you know it's roman you know the united states kind of considers itself roman look at our you know architecture and that type of thing we're like the new imperial place right and so i think that's what it has to do with um they're using the images of gods and goddesses from rome um and what do the what does the Latin say? Um, here's a here's something for you to check out. And um, it's the uh, these they they're called patches. And have you seen those patches? Okay, so haha, ha, we don't what, know, or haha, ha, we yeah, know, but you don't. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. And so a lot of those are in Latin, and that's where you see. And a lot of those would be on the actual satellites. The images would be on the satellites, and then people who were working the mission they would get the patch. Uh huh. And so the ha ha part was that on the satellite, or the, that was just on the patch? Um, usually you just have the god or goddess and the image, like the dragon or something like that, on the satellite with the Latin phrase that accompanies it. And the Latin phrases are different for each launch. Oh, yeah, here's the patches I was talking about. Like three, ooh, what is this? Okay. Vandenberg, there's one with a witch. There's an alien face. Um, One says, a lifetime of silence behind the green door. You guys gotta look into these NASA mission pa- Oh, Pan, where's BLA, is he here? Here's Pan. Uh, Palladium at night. What does this one say? Diabolus Quem. I don't even, something about the devil. I don't know. Um, three snakes. Here's classified flight test with an alien on it. Yeah, all these patches are like cuckoo bananas, man. And creepy as heck. We never played that one of Elon's nanny, did we? I don't know, my, my hands are getting tired. Let's find a good one for the very last TikTok. Medieval Bible contains image of the universe. I'm going to end with that one.
Oh, this one just says ritual. What is that? Set wanted to do away with Osiris. So he had him cut up into 14 pieces. Now his body's cut up into 14 pieces. It gets thrown into the Nile River. And uh, Isis, of course, isn't happy about this. Isis tries to collect all the pieces up, and she's only able to find 13 pieces. So she fashions together those 13 pieces to form a more perfect union, which is the framework of our 13 colonies, a more perfect union, based off of the myth of Osiris. Now, that's showing Egyptian magic even in the framework and the fabric of our foundation, right? It's not an accident that they brought together 13 colonies to form a more perfect union. That was all by design. It was all manufactured. But what's crazy is that she fashions together these 13 pieces, but guess what piece is missing? So what do they do? They set up this ritual. That's what the obelisk is, by the way. The obelisk represents the 14th piece that they couldn't find. You find it in the Vatican. You find it in ancient Egypt. You find it here in the States. You find it all over cemeteries. You find it all over the Masonic lodges. It represents the Osiris. And they believe by setting up this ritual. Now, it's all a recreation of the original ritual that took place between Isis and the 13 pieces of Osiris. The Washington Monument and the Dome of Isis, which is the Capitol building. Now, this is fascinating because the original ritual had to take place between what we were in a courtyard between a dome and an obelisk putting those two together like that creates a power generator literally a generator for this ritual and the idea is that the seed of osiris the seed is going to come up and emit out of washington monument and it's going to take over whoever our president is. Now, this sounds crazy, but think about this. In ancient Egypt, what had happened was the, the Pharaoh would go through this ritual. He would enter in a man, and he would exit the ritual a god. That was their belief, and they believed that their Pharaoh was literally the embodiment of Osiris because of that ritual. They were calling him up out of the underworld. So what we have in America is this same ritual, basically, that the Freemasons believe that they have maintained the, the proper language and the ritual to a T from the ancient world. They claim to have this still today. They're right there between the dome and the obelisk, right there in that power generator, and right around the corner at the Herodome, which is what they call the Masonic Mecca of the world, literally. The Herodome is, is this temple, this massive, crazy temple in D.C. They are up there while they do this ritual, and they are literally doing the raising of Osiris ritual while the presidential inauguration happens at every election. And they are literally calling on the spirit of Osiris to raise up, or Apollo, however you want to slice it, to come out of the underworld and to possess, exits the ritual, a god. This is what the Freemasons believe. Now, people are going to say, well, not every president's a Freemason. Well, most of them have ties to secret societies, but they're not all conscious of the ritual. It's been going on now since the beginning, uh, to, to our knowledge, since the beginning of, of this nation being set up. They believe that it's going to stick eventually. See, they don't know which president is going to be the final Osiris. Now, they believed in the foundation of this nation that Washington was a type. He was the first Osiris. Technically, every president, in their eyes, is an Osiris. But the crazy thing is, is that not every time the ritual is going to stick. They have to keep doing it until it actually sticks and they get that one that they've been waiting for. This is kind of like when we talk about Babylon working. You know, how, how many years, uh, you know, was Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard working in the desert trying to get this ritual to stick? They do this at the inauguration of every U.S. president because they believe there is going to come a time and a president that will be the one. He will be the one and they will go through this ritual when his body lies in state in the Capitol Dome. I believe they're going to do this ritual, and that final raising ritual, that's going to be the one that's going to stick. I don't believe it's going to stick when they're doing it at an inauguration. The real one's going to take place when this Antichrist man dies. They lay him in state in the Capitol building beneath the 72 pentagrams in the apotheosis of George Washington. And that's not it. There's so much more numerology about the Capitol building and the 13 statues and the statutory hall, statutory hall. But I believe that's the real ritual. That's the one where he's going to raise, where the spirit of Osiris, which the Bible talks about this, this Apollyon coming up from the bottomless pit. 
set wanted to do away with Osiris. So that's pretty crazy. Let's do one more because my arm's tired. And I want to thank all you guys for talking to me down. Uh, being scared of this eclipse. I think we had fun instead of fear today. So let's end on this one is pretty cool. Medieval Bible contains image of the universe from 2019. There are a few things that make me stop and take a breath. And that book is one of them. Somebody threw a, a Hail Mary almost a thousand years in the future. It's an illuminated manuscript, which means there's gold foil throughout the book to illuminate certain pictures. Very different from almost any other Bible written in the time. But the weirdest thing in the whole book is that picture, not his face. It presents God as an architect, which was kind of a weird stance at the time. 700-ish years later, William Blake brought this back with those two paintings up there. What's weird is the ball. So if you imagine that you're looking out to the edge of the universe from above Earth, that is what it would look like. This is called a logarithmic picture of the universe. The image is set up by perception. Music people, this is how equalizers work. So that image is set up like an equalizer, like low, mids, and highs. In terms of how your eyes see, using that. Golden ratio is perception. It's how, you're, you, it's how you hear. There's a golden ratio in your ear. There's also one in the cone cell in your eyeball, and is why the golden ratio is called the golden ratio, because it spirals right into gold. It's a rule for all of the universe. So if we're above Earth looking out, the logarithmic picture is how our eyes would see it if we could see that. Now imagine that I took a picture of the whole thing in 360 degrees, and then we get something that looks kind of like this. This is everything we currently know about what's in our universe from Earth's perspective. And this photo gets really, really detailed. It was made by using data from all kinds of telescopes and instruments from around the world and compiled into something that we can see. So all of combined might of humanity made that image with our current technology now. It's pretty amazing. It's beautiful. Now here's what happens when we color grade it. Here's what happens when I put it next to the bubble. Look at the star placement. Look at the lobes around the yellow part in the center. Look at the voids. Look at the black space. Look at the little tentacles around the edge. Almost a thousand years ago. How? I want to remind you that this is during the Dark Ages. This and all of my recent posts are going to be in the sequel to Codex that comes out at the end. Yeah, it does look like a Mandelbrot, and that is super interesting if you haven't seen any like documentaries or anything about what Mandelbrots are it's kind of like a proof of creation that couldn't be proved until we had computers so God it is continually revealing himself to us um, the more we learn the more we learn about him um, let me just scroll um, I don't know here's a cute dog What else? I'm having fun, but I'm tired. What do we do? Regrowing teeth with frequencies? <laughs> oh, okay. Here's the last one. This is Disney's 1940s Fantasia, and this is also the Latter-day Saints Temple Endowment film. Let me explain. In 1953, the church was building the first temple in Europe in Switzerland, and this was a big deal because it would serve a large geographic area, and it would need to perform these sacred but long and complicated ordinances in multiple languages with minimal temple workers. Gordon B. Hinckley, who worked in the temple department at the time, proposed making a motion picture of the endowment ceremony instead of having temple workers physically reenact the ritual drama every session, which is how it had been done up to this point. Now, keep in mind, the church did not have the motion picture studio or the production resources it has today. President McKay allowed them to film in the assembly hall on the top floor of the Salt Lake Temple. They put up a great backdrop, set up some props, and they even hoisted in prop trees in through the windows of the Salt Lake Temple to create this low-budget set for the first endowment film in six languages. And here's where Fantasia comes into play. While the church could reasonably reenact the fall of Adam and Eve in a simple set in the Salt Lake Temple, producing a film representation of the creation of the world in 1955 was another matter entirely. To that end, the church wrote the Walt Disney Company, this is the letter, and requested a license to three minutes of Stravinsky's Rite of Spring in the 1940 film Fantasia. 
This is the segment that depicts the creation of the Earth as well as the proliferation and destruction of the dinosaurs. They took just the visuals of the first few minutes of the creation of the Earth, they added their own audio, and they prepended it to the rest of the filming they did in the Salt Lake Temple. You can learn all about this super fun history in Saints Volume 3 in the Gospel Library app and follow Scripture Plus for more on the temple. And this is Disney. So, speaking of Fantasia and Disney movies, um, Paul and I are going to do a stream on the 17th, I think it was. We're doing Mary Poppins. We're doing Black Cauldron. We're doing Tomorrowland. And we are doing Song of the South. So if you guys want to um, watch those, and we're going to break them down. I know Paul's always got a lot of um, good insights and good orthodox uh advice for us and we're gonna have Courtney Turner on talking about theosophy in a couple days and um, I am going to do the secret architecture of DC on Rockfin very soon and that's gonna be it for today we've done three hours and 40 minutes thank you guys all for hanging for so long my arms are jelly and I think we're all going to make it. I hope everybody's safe. Nobody had any emergencies. Um, the mega ritual of the eclipse seems to be over. Let's check our donuts one last time. We're good on that. And um, I love you guys and see you next time.